Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Blackout Gaming TV. Tonight we have for you the grand final of the fourth edition of the Highlander Nations Cup. The defending champions Sweden have made it all the way to the final once again, and they're going to be aiming to be the first team to win the Highlander Nations Cup twice in its existence. Facing them will be the giant killers Ukraine, having made their way to the final, knocking out France, the United States of America, and Denmark. I am CJ, with me tonight will be Sigafu, and John will be doing the camera and production. Sigafu, are you excited for this game tonight, man? So excited? No, dude, I'm absolutely pumped. I mean, it definitely should be a great match, especially like the storylines coming into this with Ukraine, as you said, the giant killers coming through all of this, coming up against the adversity of the former champions, and the champions then looking to set their pace of two times. So, I mean, it just seems like it's going to be a great matchup here as we start on upward. Yeah, we've had uh, three maps have already been decided between the two teams. Upward, I believe, been picked by Sweden. Steel will be played again in the knockout stages of this cup. Um, and it is another kind of a home turf for the Ukrainians. They do like the Steel map. And the decider, if we need to go to the third map, will be Badwater. Um, and like I said earlier, Sweden with a lot more, lot more experience in this competition, maybe had a bit of a slow start in the group stages, deciding on their roster, changing players about a bit. Um, but a lot of returning faces will be playing in their second consecutive final. Um, whereas Ukraine, pretty much uh, new to this. I mean, they've uh, they've got to the knockout stages before, I believe, once before in the past. Um, but to get this far, I, I mean, I have to give credit to Niyunen. Um In our first cast, way at the start, I believe it was Germany, Lithuania, right in the group stages at the beginning of this competition, I asked him, who do you think are going to be a team that's going to you know, do well and surprise people? And he said, if you want a, a dark course of this competition, look no further than Ukraine. Uh, they're a team that could beat teams. And, you know, like we saw, they beat France in the knockout stages of the first round, went on to beat the USA across two maps, um, and then beat Denmark. They dropped their first map in the knockout stages in the semi-final against Denmark. Denmark will be playing in the uh, third playoff against Russia, that will be happening later tonight. But for now, starting first will be the grand final. Um, we can go over the rosters while we're just waiting for the players to ready up and uh, get into the server and such. Looking at the Sweden roster, um, extremely strong. Her P will be playing on Scout, obviously plays for TLR. In did very well at I-55. Zebra Sign, another player, played for Nerd Rage at I-55. Again, one of the most well-known uh, Sixes players around. Ascendary has been you know, named in the top three of Pyros in Prem over the past couple of seasons. Uh, one of the best Pyros in Europe, undoubtedly. We have Niyunen who will be playing Heavy. Um, plays Engineer for High Panda in Prem at the moment. Did play Heavy for them for one season, but main calls on Heavy, uh, along with on Kaya on Medic. Um, the two of them, main call for the team. On Kaya switching over to Medic for this, uh, com for this map, sorry, uh, for this match having played Soldier in a couple of games and it seemed to work out really, really well for them. That experience on Medic um, and the main calling factor really helping them on Steel in the semi-final against Russia when they looked down and out and they managed to stay on in it. Uh, demo will be Ali, um, known uh, by some in sixes, plays in high um, and also does, has done very well in this competition as well. It's Mint, former NG of the season in Prem, played for Fair Enough last season in the Premier Division. Uh, Twisted will be playing Sniper, has been playing Medic a lot for Sweden in this competition. Um, did very well on uh, on Medic, but switching him over to Sniper, it's probably be about the fourth or the fifth Sniper Sweden has fielded in this competition so far. And uh, yeah, he did pretty well in the semi-final, and I think that switch with Onkaya really did benefit Sweden. Um, Onkaya moving on to Medic, a little bit more experience for him, and Twisted more comfortable on the Sniper perhaps in Highlander. Finally, we have Viljack, one of the best spies in Europe, undoubtedly. Uh, plays for fair enough as well. Um, very dangerous with the ambassador, and it's quality through and through through this uh, this Sweden roster. I mean, for you, Sigafu, who do you think is going to be out of all of those players is going to be have to make the difference in this game? Uh, I definitely think Ali is going to have to step it up and ke and keep going on as well as with Zebusan. Uh, you know, they both did exceptionally well in the game. I mean, so with the switching of Zeb onto the soldier. Uh, really, I think, is what kind of changed it around. I mean, uh, the last game, they had a, were on the last leg, and they were able to come back again, against Russia to make it into the finals there. But I think that switch onto Soldier, I mean, you talked about it, um, of 
uh, on Kaya going to Medic really helped them out with that. But um, besides, that, I think Vidjak, um he looked really strong, and I think you know you need your pick classes to step it up in big matches because they're the ones who can kind of turn the tide. So twist it as well uh, in that category. I mean, again, just you need your pick classes to step it up in big games because they're the ones who can turn the tides. Absolutely, and a map like Upward, it really does open things up for uh, for any class to make a difference on this map, and we have gone live now, just enough time to go over the Ukrainian roster, who will be starting in the blue, they'll be attacking first and setting a time with Sweden in the red, um, but just to go over the team, RT will be playing Scout, uh, very underrated I believe, um, a lot of people talk about Kenzie and Abra being the Ukrainian demos, uh, sorry, Scouts, um, having much more experience in Highlander and Sixes, but RT has played in high in six is a very very good scout um, and has done uh, has done well for them so far. Lippy, also a, a prem level soldier in sixes, did very very well so far in this competition. Food ration on Pyro Death, another name, big name for the Ukrainians, plays for fair enough in the Premier Division. Uh, one of the best demos in European Highlander at the moment, uh, in my opinion. Gun Rocks will be on heavy. Ehor will be on Engineer, Klefsas, who is the main medic for Wasp, another Premiership Division team, uh, the captain of this team leading them to the final. Uh, Nesh on Sniper, I believe, is probably the, one of the most informed snipers around at the moment. We'll be playing for Stacks next season, very, very dangerous, and isn't going to be a player I think is going to stand up for them on this map, especially with Detoed on the Spy. And um, we see this quite aggressive forward hold from the Swedes, with uh, Niyunen holding up on this cliff area, and Zebusai quite far forward. Looks like he's running the direct hit on defense. I mean, that's kind of a strange uh, choice. As I say that, he does take down death, though. But lots of players go down as Nesh takes a headshot onto Zebusai. Twisted goes down as well, and that's going to open the things up for them, Sigafu, with no sniper to contend with. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these sight lines are so devastating for the snipers uh, when you're coming out on offense. I mean, there's basically nowhere you can go where you can't get sniped, but Vidjack actually doing that job right there with his ambassador, taking down Artie as food ration goes down as he gets another 2k. Taking down Nesh right there, so Twisted goes down. Well, let's just have the Spy step up with the Ambassador right there. As the Medic is out for the Ukraine here, as uh, on the offensive side, it looks like they want to trade Ubers here fairly early on as Vidjak is coming in there, uh, trying to get some damage onto them. Because Ukraine's Mech did go down to 85 HP. They do pop the Uber on this flank side, coming around this corner with the Delman, who's actually being a really good air blast back as the Pyro does die in that exchange. Finally, the counter Uber does get popped off on the defensive side, but they're not going to find a lot of frags with this, and they actually just might opt to back up that second point after that almost a little bit of a strange counter pop there as the gun went down. Yeah, it was a very, very late pop there. It's going to put them at a slight disadvantage, about 10%, so that shouldn't really come into too much play. As Nesh gets the body shot onto Twisted, and that's just going to open things up. Ukraine already all over this hill area, getting a nice sticky onto Ali, but he's surely going to be able to escape there, but maybe not. As there is so much aggression coming out there. Um, out of death, almost manages to take down the Swedish demo man, but he survives. And Sweden have got a decent hold now. They've got their heavy and their medic up in this little window area in the house. Zippersai getting headshot again by Nesh, already going ham. Um, getting quite a few picks so far in this game already, but Twisted replies with one onto death. And that's going to slow down the Ukrainian push. 1 minute 18, it took them to capture that first point. Pretty standard, and the, lo uh, sorry, the loose cannon, I should say, um, from Ali is just spamming over there. And that is very, very dangerous. You can take a double dunk. As I say, that Gunrox does take a double dunk to the face. Uh, but Dito really uh, getting the backstabs onto Twisted here. Gets another one. And no sniper for Sweden um, is going to allow Ukraine to push forward a little bit more. They're trying to get into the house. Death uses the Uber. Um, well, he gets the Uber, I should say. And that sentry is just going to be wrangled by Onkaya, standing really far forward. Balls of steel and uses his Uber later on. And Ali comes in to clear up that car. Um, so it's going to stop that car from being pushed. But Sweden aren't being able to advance. They don't have the players to move forward. They are on the low ground now. And they've got to be careful about Ukraine doing another uh, re-push here as uh, Lippi's getting aggressive against a decent spam on that sentry. Yeah, I don't know how that gun was able to stay up through that push as the gun's so low right now, but really nice job. It's meant to keep it alive. I mean, seriously, that, that gun had to be down to about 10 HP. It just didn't get enough focus on it for it to go down. It's actually the heavy's doing just that. Coming around the corner, actually, he gets taken out in that double window. And so now it's going to, I mean, the gun actually does finally go down with the soldier lippy, and the engineer's going to run with his cart as a Sweden's passive hold finally does get pushed through here. As now they're going to hold inside the house a little bit, or are they going to back up to the third point? As it looks like they are going to back up here, but pretty good job so far. I mean, again, I've criticized the Swedes for their passive hold on second, but that is what seems to be the standard in Europe, and they did get at least a few minutes off on that. 
three minutes for the first two points in. CJ, what do you think about that as uh, just a... Is that kind of average, fast? What do you what do you feel for that time uh, for, for the first two points? I feel the Swedes would have biked a little bit longer there. Three minutes to six is standard. I mean, it's it's not too bad. They're not going to be disappeared. But I feel they would have liked a little bit more as they do use the Uber. The Uber being used on the ramp here. Both teams were a lot of flashes coming in from the Ukraines. But uh, Ali got launched into the air somehow managed to escape with his life and with a full buff in the end he starts to get a bit aggressive onto this upper area spamming the car doing great work there just to slow down the car and um talking about that passive uh, hold there do agree that we do see this aggressive hold being used a little bit more by teams at deutschland uh, the team i play for checkers had this insanely aggressive hold inside uh, the tunnel itself um, and we're seeing a lot more aggressive holds but that passive hold i uh, didn't seem to work out too well um, but 3 minutes and 6 seconds, they're not going to be too disappointed. The third point and the last point is where you can get most of your time. And Sweden do have this really aggressive hold. They have this uh, sentry gun uh, on the tracks, quite far forward. They have their heavy in their demo and their sniper all watching this ramp area. Anything that comes up there is going to take so much damage as they do start to get aggressive. And they use the Uber. And they are going to force the Uber from Ukraine inside the house. And it gets flashed a lot from Ukraine. So many players die there, including Gunrox and Nesh. And Sweden just back out with their medic alive. Good play by them to force the Uber very early on. Like I said, Ukraine aren't going to be able to push up there without taking a lot of damage. So they're probably going to have to wait for either a, a big pick or um, wait until their Uber. Yeah, that's a really nice job. And getting Ali out of there alive, that was the important part. Because losing a demo man in this situation, demo man is incredibly powerful on defense here on the third point. So he was able to get out alive somehow. Actually, I thought the pyro was going to actually keep him in there with the air blast. As the other important thing that, uh, you know, Sweden's doing a good job on right now is keeping this cart far back, trying to contest it. But currently being uncontested as the scout and engineer and sniper are on it. Uh, putting on us, Ali finally notices the carts getting up there, but still a lot of free time being pushed up on your, here in Ukraine. Got a little bit aggressive there, but actually backed off as the medic went down for Ukraine. So that's going to oh, reset he goes the down time. again. Sorry to interrupt, but Klesas died earlier to a double donk from uh, Ali, and he just respawns, peeks his head around the corner, and Twisted coming into his own now, took down Nesh, and then took down the medic as the Uber comes in again from Sweden. Pretty much a free Uber, um, and they are clearing up this little sentry nest, take down the teleporter. Uh, Death is there, surely going to get cleaned up. Herpy getting a nice big buff. Uh, doesn't fancy rushing into those stickies though. Um, Niuna may get caught out here though. No, he wins the battle against Arty. Um, and you can hear the headshot crit sound running off of Spilljack and uh, Herpy combined to take down Clefsas again. He's had about three times in the space of the last minute or so as Onkaya managed to get 100% Uber. And um, I'm not sure whether he built that Uber. I don't think he did. I think he actually picked up um, a medigun there, Sigafu, and has uh, got himself on third again with a nice. 100% Uber. Yeah, I mean, if he did that, I mean, we saw that uh, in the Sweden versus Russia game being a big factor as uh, it is something that is, this is pretty much the only competitive game format that that is allowed in right now. Uh, and, and being able to do that just swings momentum so much here as we got Klepsis sitting at 60%, looking to get this push finally underway. But this third point, I mean, the Sweden, I love the aggression. I mean, I talked that I didn't like their passive hold on second. Right now, they're playing incredibly aggressively. They have the DM to back it up in the intelligence. I mean, it's really working out for them here as a food ration does go down as we have this soldier that's Zebicide peeking around the corner with a direct head. As it looks like they want to get aggressive again, but they opt to back up. Actually, I say that. I'm sorry, that's Clefsis going down again and that actually was the Zebes side with that direct hit so it's a little bit of an odd choice you don't see direct hit on defense too much but you can't question it when it's making plays like that I know Klefsas keeps on dying here. he does pick up his minigun so he's going to get uber uh, straight away anyway um, that's only basically going to slow Ukraine down a little bit um, but Ankai has been sitting on 100% for quite a while now. Sweden just seems so comfortable. And the Union is now on this balcony. He was on this little uh, area with the railings early on. I really like that because he was able to watch the car. But the Uber comes in very, very early from Ukraine on this ramp. They flash a lot of people in. Onkai gets juggled, but he's going to use most of his Uber on the sender. He's just going to push people back. And Sweden just have total control of this area right now. Gunrocks goes down to Ali. Her P falls down off the cliff somehow. Uh, but Viljak there is just on the cart with the Ambassador. Um, just trying to spam anyone and headshot anyone who gets close to him. But Death using the lock and load 
um, manages to take down Ali, and it looks like Ukraine are gaining a little bit of ground now. Uh, three players down for Sweden. They have control of the ramp area, and the Union has to back out here. He is so weak. Five HP on the Sweden Heavy. He is going to finally go down as Lippy comes in. He gets a 3k, takes down the Union on Kaya and a Sentry, and that Sentry is going to be pulled back away from uh, by its mint there, and Ukraine are finally going to defeat this stranglehold Sweden had on the third point. And they're going to be walking into last with 80%. They're going to have 100% uber advantage by the time Onkaya spawns. And that was a really good push in the end as uh, Lippy now conching and trying to take down this sentry already. And uh, Ukraine really in the ascendancy here. Yeah, they are looking great right now. Santa's 100% huge uber advantage right now as they're trying to take over the top. Uh, that third point was really taken but from Ali going down here early as Ali goes down again on this final point. Actually, Ubering the sniper right now, trying to find this pick onto the engineer or something as the Delman's doing a good job of spanning me onto it, but it's Mint doing all of it, all he can do in his engineer prowess to keep that gun alive right now as it is still holding up. Finally does go down with the help of the spy right there as this cart is being moved forward, but uh, Ankai is sitting at 50%, a little bit behind, or sorry, a little bit in front of the UK medic, because actually, Ali's jumping in onto the combo with the help of the pyro, actually chasing oh, it down, a and down! A sendry. Huge reflect from a sendry right there, taking down Lippy as well as the medic, so this is going to give a chance for the Swedes to hold on to this final point. Oh my word, that was insane! Sentry coming in from behind there, just setting fire to everybody, and that stray rocket just being reflected straight into uh, the medic there. 2k with the reflect, amazing play there by the Swedish medic. Um, Ali is the only casualty so far for uh, Sweden, but that car is so very close to the, uh, the edge there. It just needs to be tickled over that little ramp um, and into the pit, and it will go down. Uh, but Mint has now got his sentry up to level 2 and he is going to be wrangling it and a sentry with her peers on the prowl on the car just stop stopping anyone as Twisted Dirt gets on a 3 kill streak taking down Klefsas and um, that's significant but for me it's not as significant as it is like you said this has been the first and only tournament uh, that's going to be allowing uh, the, uh, the ability to pick up mediguns after you die it seems a pretty dumb concept uh, as that many Medic gun death, sorry, medic death is pretty pointless. If he picks up his medic gun now, he's going to be back to where he was before. Um, but at the moment, Onkai with 100% has got his combo up in this upper area. Niyunan and Ali and the sentry are all up there protecting their medic as best they can. And Twisted is in this window. He gets a body shot onto the sentry. Um, he can't headstrike a sentry, sick of food, but he takes down the sentry as uh, Ali's getting aggressive. And uh, this is just kind of a stalemate now, waiting for an opening for one of the pit classes. Yeah, I mean, this is actually, Ali looks like they want to get aggressive. They do pop this Uber onto the Delman, the sweet Delman trying to come around the corner, tries to find something onto the medic here, and looks like this Uber is being used, and they end up, I mean, they got, what, like, the Engineer and the Pyro. So not the most useful Uber of all time here, as Clefs is sitting at 75% as a scout actually running up there, taking down Ali that's already doing a nice job with the help of the Heavy, comes around the corner, takes down the Pyro here, as a soldier comes in to clean him up, as the Conk does come out, uh, onto him, that's Zebicide who actually gets taken out by death right there. And now we got Clefs is sitting at 96% as they should get ready to push in with his Uber. Yeah, eight and a half minute time for the third point is pretty slow. Um, and this hasn't helped this kind of stalemate on last as Ukraine used that Uber on the floor. It's not going to achieve much as Nunan has got the uh, high ground, but he does get taken down there by Eho who just runs up there but twisted on a five tilt kill streak. Takes down Eho, he's in such good position. Uh, still up there, very weak, finally goes down to death, but he's been doing so much work. Ali takes down death, winning the demo battle, uh, gets the health back on the floor, and he's going to spam down this choke area, forcing Ukraine to back out. Um, but it's going to be equal Ubers now for both teams, and Ukraine nearly need to get some sort of pick. They either need to take down the NG or the Medic or something like that to really open things up to get in here, as it's such a stalemate point if you're going in Uber versus Uber, and Sweden have got such a good position as they get their combo classes up into the upper area again. Nesh desperately trying to get a pick, managed to get a body shot onto Ali, taking him down, but essentially just pushes him away with that flamethrower just to give his uh, combo a little bit more time and space. Looking at the Uber gun, uh, sorry, the Mediguns now, uh, it's about a 20% advantage for uh, Ukraine, and I'm wondering oh. why that is. Actually, what? Ankaya just went down there from Lippy, who came up the stairs and basically just put two rockets right at his feet. So nice job there. And but Clefsis went down as well from Zebicide right after that. So yeah, it'll be interesting. But I, I think this actually might be easier for Clefsis to pick up his own gun. Depending on where he dropped it, as Ankaya does have to cross to be able to get there. 
But Sweden yeah, have taken I... their combo down under stairs, under the stairs now, and uh, Ali's getting really aggressive. And uh, this may be to their undoing if they're not careful. But Ali somehow still stays alive. But Onkara goes down to uh, a backstab from Dito, and Lippy clears up Ali there. And Ukraine have got so many players. Um, alive, hey, they have their entire team alive, and it's only it's mini. That level three isn't going to stay alive to the spam from the lock and load. Ukraine are using the coach for great jump in from the unit, gets so much damage down onto the combat, but doesn't take anyone down. Viljack comes in, gets a backstab onto Gunrocks, it's going to slow that down. Time's three on the cart now, um, but it does look like it's finally going to go in. Ali unable to stop that. It's going to be a 13 minute, 31 second time to Kavu, and that is a hell of a long time for uh, Sweden to try and get this cap now. Yeah, I mean, that is plenty of time for anybody who's not familiar with Highlander and expected times and what is a good time. Uh, I would say, like, what, like, probably between, like, seven to nine minutes is, is somewhere around average. You know, below seven, I'd say, is fast, and anything above nine, I would say, is slow. And this is pretty slow. I mean, it's definitely doable, as obviously Sweden did hold that long, but, I mean, you basically are, are requiring a really solid hold on multiple points uh, throughout this, and... You know, if I was Ukraine, you know, we kind of sometimes talk about what the mumble environment's like. You know, it's I think it's important to put it into perspective. As this is a best of three map we're playing here, so even if they do lose this round, they're still going to go on to a second round in here. They still can recover from this. So a big thing is not to get too caught up in the fact that you struggled on offense, but uh, and probably are going to lose this round. But just kind of looking forward onto that next round. But it'll be interesting to see here. I mean, you, maybe Ukraine can pull it out. Maybe they can do something differently. But I don't know, CJ, what did you think uh, kind of was the undoing of Ukraine here uh, on offense, at least? Or what do you think they could have done better as we do have the gates opening up? Uh, I really feel they should have used some sort of momentum moving in from third. They got such um, a big wipe on third. They could have pushed forward, get some more pressure onto uh, the last point before Sweden had a chance to set up. Uh, but they allowed them to set up as Nihuna just runs forward. He's going to surely take down death here. No, but he gets so much damage onto him. Um, and that sentry gun is going to go down straight away. Um, to the direct hit spam from Zebesai. Great work there, but oh. lots of kills coming in the favor of uh, of uh, sorry of Ukraine, and Onkai went down there. I did not see how that happened, Sigafu. Yeah, that was already on the flank side, I believe. I didn't, it was just out of my camera, but I heard the medic crying in pain as he did go down. But again, the medigun is sitting right here on the corner on the flank side. Onkai should see it. They're going to actually run out for it straight away here. This is one of the interesting things is if I knew that the medic just died, I would search for his gun and shoot off the cliff, or just something different. You know, you gotta take. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but they are using the crit creek. Totally didn't notice that at the start, but Onkai has picked up his medigun again, and they are on 100% crit creek, and it's used on Ali. But the Ukrainians just drop down and totally annihilate the Sweden combo as they try to push forward. Gunrocks cleaning up everyone there, and uh, Sweden's push there with the crit creek isn't doing anything so far. The redeeming factor is only Zebrasai who takes down the Eagle Sentry gun again with that direct hit. He is not being challenged at all. He's doing so much work just getting those direct hit rockets onto the combo and onto the sentry. And it's forcing Gunrocks to actually take a passive position on the stairs. Uber is forced, but the medic gets launched. Clefts us there onto the cliff. And uh, Nesh on a five kill streak takes down the Union again, but Ukraine deciding to get out here as Viljack takes down Gunrocks with the Ambassador as he's running away. So much damage, her peak clears up Nesh, and Ukraine have got to be careful here. They need to get right out. They do not have the players to uh, try and defend second here as Zebasai is taking all the heals and trying to get forward. And this could be uh, Ukraine's undoing if they try to defend this with not enough players as Sweden are getting very aggressive already. Yeah, I mean, this is a case where you have to be very careful on Ukraine. Actually, Sweden looks like they took their foot off the pedal here as the medic is not even on cliffside. Actually, just a demo man and heavy finally coming over here. Could give the opportunity for Ukraine to be able to try to hold the cliff. Uh, but looks like they're opting to kind of go for the traditional passive hold here. Is actually the engineer already building on the third point, which I do not think is the wrong thing to do. It's Ankai coming at 99% here. Looks like they're going to pop it right away as Clefsis at 99%. He's going to be able to get in time. Yes, he is down to 31 HP, but does get the pop up onto the demo man here. But they are getting stuffed in here as the Pyro is actually chasing around the heavy on the train side. And looks like he's going to be able to try to be the scout as well, but no, he's not, as they are going to be able to back up, but that push right there was nice and clean, didn't lose too many players, and took that second point here, and it looks like they might try to use that momentum to push onto this third point, but the thing you have to be careful on offense here is that cart takes a long time to push up this hill. Absolutely, that is something even the best teams forget about, the progress from uh, second point to third point with that cart. You can push your combo all the way forward, but if you don't get that cart up until the third point, it's going to take a long time for it to catch up. A great play there by Sweden. Had to point out a Sendry there, just pushing the Ukrainian combo into the house, and then moving onto the flank to take down Gunrocks. 
um, and that really opened things up for Sweden to get this aggressive now. But Lippy is in a good position. He's just spamming down on this ramp area. Can defend the car, but he gets challenged there. Great play there by uh, Herpy and Mint to combine take down the soldier and uh, Sweden look like they already have control of this third point they are going to use this uber but Ali gets pushed far back and on Kaya there tries to pick him up and uh, then the Sweden uh, sorry the Ukrainian pyro food ration just pushes everyone backwards but a uh, backstab from Dito takes down the Union and it looks like Ukraine are crumbling here on this third point they need to get to the back of the big backstab from Viljak takes down Ehor the sentry gun gets body shot there by a uh, twisted and uh, Sweden have going to have a huge uber advantage walking into last night's Sigafu and this is their round to lose with just under 10 minutes to go for one last push. Yeah I just want to point out there that Ascendary pushed uh, Clefsis off, almost off the cliff, he actually landed onto the the uh, just outside the house on that flank side and was basically a free kill so both Pyros trying to do their work of air blasting but uh, it was only Ascendary actually is Viljax actually onto the medic there, Clefsis down to 76 HP does actually, it's Ali cleaning up that kill right there. No medic here, only four alive on this final point here. And this should be a pretty clean take. As nine minutes left in the clock, Uber does get popped off onto Ali here, who's just trying to spawn camp right now. Times three onto the cart as uh, Zebside comes in there with a direct hit cleaning up. And only the sniper is really fighting the defense right now as respawns do come and spy in onto the cart. But this should be a, a nice and easy cap here as the Swedes take that in a blazing time. I believe that was around five minutes. If I calculated that correctly, like five to six minutes at most. Yeah, I would say around five minutes, judging by the time that was left on the clock. And uh, Sweden are very, very good at this map. I saw, I've seen them scrim this map against some of the best teams around, and they do very well on it. And all of the, like, you were asking earlier what was Ukraine missing, why it took them so long. I think the difference that I saw from Sweden pushing is that even when their combo, you know, Ankaya dropped uh, dropped to whatever it was, um, pushing out of the first point, um, picked up his crits Krieg anyway, got 100%, and still the combo got destroyed by uh, the positioning from the Ukrainian combo. But the difference was the flank was doing so much work for Sweden. We saw Zebesai just in this upper left-hand area, spamming the sentry with the direct hit, taking down that sentry over and over again, just hassling the NG nonstop. Viljak was just behind them, doing so much work, just you know, landing headshots, getting a couple of backstabs here and there. All of that just combining allowed, made it so much easier that when a push from the combo from Sweden did work, they took so much ground. And the difference mm -hmm. was when they were using their momentum, they went from first to second. They didn't give Ukraine a chance to set upon uh, the second point we saw about a three minute time from ukraine pushing second that's because sweden defended against you know one two ubers maybe on the second point before you know wisely backing out onto third ukraine didn't even have a chance it was just a non-uber push that pushed them forward and then when the uber did come out they were using that uber to kind of carry on over to the third point and it's just that if you have that momentum you've got to keep it going and i think that's the one thing that's missing from ukraine at the moment is the support from uh, from the rest of the team when their combo does something wrong i mean lippy is doing amazing work at the moment um he's got quite a few med picks uh, i'll check the logs in a minute but lippy has been doing some good work for them and nesh has been getting so many kills on the sniper class but I really think momentum is the key factor that Ukraine is missing at the moment and they need to spot the advantages that they get and when they have them to really make the most out of them and that's not always just one thing maybe that's you know barreling over onto the sec uh, to the next point and taking control of that area no, absolutely. I mean, well, and, and the thing I always like to say is that the the big thing that wins and loses games in payload map is transitions, and that that is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on offense and defense, it's making sure. You, sorry, yeah, talk, take over for a second. Oh, sorry. Right, I've just got the logs actually now. Um... And looking at the, the highest damage there was 12,000, just under 600 a minute from Ali. Um, and that is much higher than anyone else. The closest was Death with 425 a minute. Um, so that's a, you know, a 5,000 damage difference. It's pretty, pretty huge um, when you consider two demo, man, uh, two de demo men. Sorry. And then we have second, uh, 27 frags coming from Ali. Uh, in second place was Herpy with 22 equal with Nesh, the highest scoring of the Ukrainian team. Then Viljak coming in with 18 uh, hitting 27 headshots. And when you've got a, your spy doing that on the flank, just hassling non-stop, uh, it just does so much work. Lippy as well doing work for Ukraine with yeah. 16 frags and then death. Um, but it just looks like, looking from the logs, um, you see a lot of the flank classes doing so much more work uh, for Sweden compared to Ukraine. And uh, it, it's pretty damning when it comes down to the damage. 
Well, and I really want to underline that point of the spy play right there, Vijak hitting the headshots. Um, you know, we have a spy kind of in a similar play style. Uh, Akuma, who plays, uh, you know, for has played for various teams and stuff like that. And I can say is like you cannot really underline how annoying and frustrating it is to play against a spy who is hitting their headshots uh, with the ambassador. Because traditionally, when you play a spy. Uh, you know, if they're having, like, most spies will have a normal game where they hit some, they don't hit others, but, you know, usually it's, like, it's a kind of a non-factor, but if you're playing against a spy who's hitting their shots, they're putting themselves aggressively out in the open, they're trying to take you on, they're making plays, it is this constant factor of, like, this aggressive sniper. It's, like, doesn't matter where you are, you're going to be taking damage, and you're always at risk to die, or always at risk to take that extra 100 damage, because even if you're a scout and you don't die, I'm about to push in, and then I take a headshot for 100 damage off my HP, suddenly I don't want to push anymore. I, I don't want to take that aggression on, and that's kind of like what a spy can do. I mean, he's obviously getting the frags to back it up, but even just getting the damage out there, it's kind of it definitely is that mental factor that I think a good spy can put out there, um, especially when they can put out damage in that way. It is incredibly frustrating to play against. And then Allie came out there with massive amount of damage, as you said, uh, beating out death by about 5,000. And I mean... Really, I, I think that comes down to Ali's just incredibly aggressive play style that he's just getting forward and putting out damage. And I think that's such a big thing when it comes to Highlander is is having a demo man. Um, you know, I think it's a lot of demo men don't look at their job in this way. Uh, it, sometimes it seems, but is that he creates space for his team. So he's putting out damage, like it's creating a vacuum that his team fills in. And I feel like Hurt P and Vidjak, uh, or Vidjak is, is in particular, are coming in there and being aggressive in that, which sounds weird to say a spy doing that, but I saw multiple times like the spy getting very aggressive in the space that Ali was creating uh, and, and cleaning up frags like that. And just all around, just really nice play uh, from the Swedes. Yeah, absolutely. And just to talk about Viljack, I mean, I uh, played against him a week ago uh, at Deutschland, and he, as a medic, he's such a frustrating class, uh, sorry, player to play against. Um, so, you know, spies are generally someone you have to look around and you know, watch your back, but even if you're watching your back, he could be a mile away and hitting those headshots. If he lands those headshots on you, you know, doing 102 damage to a medic can take him down very, very weakly. Um, and same with scout, same with engineer. If you're hitting those headshots, 27 headshots uh, during this map is absolutely insane, uh, more than both of the snipers. Um, so if you can keep that work up on this map, he's going to do a lot of, uh, lot of damage. And it's going to be very interesting to see how far Sweden can cap this next point. I was going to say in the, uh, the interim we had there, uh, 13 minutes, was it 13 and a half minutes, it took Ukraine to push. At Deutschland last week, in the, uh, one of the group games we saw between Land Panda and Fair Enough, um, we saw uh, an attack time from Lampander. It was about 14, 15 minutes, something crazy like that. I remember watching it because my game had, was done. I was watching it from the caster's point of view in one of their houses, and I was thinking, wow, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, Saini was going huge. Walking into a sniper like that was a, a lot of trouble. But the other team managed to hold out, you know, especially if you get the time on that third and last point then you can do anything. I mean, once the other team starts to get a little bit frustrated, if they're pushing into last two or three times and they can't do it, you know, okay, so that's only three minutes, but the morale is going to be going down. Um, Kaltu mm -hmm. telling me in Steam that was all him. He was playing the engineer. Not sure about that. Um, we'll have to check the VODs to see how, who did the work. But definitely, I think if Ukraine managed to get a decent hold on third or last, then they could claw their way back into this game. Uh, but they just didn't have that kind of time to set up. They lost too many players defending the point. I think that's a key thing about payload in general, um, but definitely this map in particular. If you don't get your players out from the first or the second point, you don't allow yourself to get set up on the next point, and that allows the attacking team to get the space. Like you said, Ali just doing so much work, walking forward, creating the space for his team to walk forward into, take that ground. And once you have the ground, it's very, very difficult to try and defend it. It does look like we are going live now, though, and... Um, I expect a uh, a team switch, and we will see Sweden attacking first, um, with Ukraine defending. Um, so we'll see if that that happens. I'm sure it will. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Confusing myself there for a minute. So we're going to be seeing Sweden attack uh, first in the blue, with uh, Ukraine defending in the red. And then we'll swap around, and Ukraine will try to beat that time. It's not looking good for Ukraine so far, but after the comeback we saw in the semi-final where Sweden were one map down, one round down, and they had the mental kind of capacity to get themselves back into it on a map that wasn't their, their choice. 
I wouldn't put it past Ukraine. They've beaten big teams so far in this competition, and they're still well in with the chance in this grand final. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, definitely nobody is out of this game. I mean, every round is kind of a... That's kind of the nice thing is you do get that reset there. Um, but I do actually want to talk about one thing real quick. I don't think they're going to go to the cheeky play again. Let me see right now. Actually, they are going to go for it. A crits creek on offense here. And I just want to underline, like, I do not agree with that play at all. Crits Krieg on the first point of upward, I feel is like not a good idea. Like you already have the advantage with an Uber charge, and a Crits Krieg I feel like is not going to give you an advantage um, because it's like at best you get like a lucky play, but at worst it kind of is what happened last time where you would have won it either way with just an Uber push. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. Uh, and how I like to play upward here is we do get the gates opened up. That is the Swedes here out on offense starting up. They are up one round on this best of three here as they have the Crits Creek ready to go with Ali actually out the gate here with Ankaya right behind him as Crits Creek does come out. One sticky actually onto the floor does find uh, one onto death right there as the counter Uber does get popped off onto Lippy here who's trying to jump forward with this black box trying to find something onto the combo and Ankaya did go down there from a backstab from the spy right now. So that is going to keep him up a little bit, uh, not too long though, as Nesh did go down, no sniper here, but the quick respawns here for the offense, it does not punish that death on Ankaya too much here, as actually despite that pick, uh, they probably will have to back up here, that is Ukraine here on defense. Yeah, just the combination of all the classes doing that, that first sticky taking uh, down death very early on. Ukraine are kind of in no man's land at the moment, the medic trying to get out, does manage to escape on 100 HP. Um, and an Ubersaw from Onkaya does take down Dito. That's going to give him an extra 25%. He's already at 90%. He's going to have his Crits Kick ready now. And if he uses it now, Clefsus is only at 70%. The Crits does come out, but no Sticky's managed to get anything. Lippy using his life there. But a big Crit Sticky does a lot of damage to Gunrocks, but doesn't actually get the kill. A um, couple of kills coming down. Twisted takes down Nesh. That really opens things up for Sweden, but they are on a roll at the moment. Uh, three players down the spam is going to take down that sentry. Ukraine aren't even bothering. They're just walking out of this second point already. They're going to set up on third. They do have 100% Uber, but Onkaya will probably be able to get another crit Krieg off by the time. Oh no, they won't because death comes in. The Uber comes in. They are going to block this second point. And this is great play. Arty picking up two kills. Death getting the key one onto Onkaya. And uh, Klefsa stays alive, which is really, really important. And Ukraine have somehow managed to keep hold of this second point. Yeah, I was actually gonna say like I really hope I was watching this I'm like I really hope Ukraine uses this Uber I mean they have Uber they're against Crits Creek they're all they needed to do was bait out Sweden and they did that perfectly right there as they do have a nice Uber advantage against uh, I'm trying to look up right now is whether or not uh, Swedes stayed on Crits Creek it looks like they did in fact stay on Crits Creek so they actually are behind right now so Ukraine realizes this they can push through again and defend this point as Ali though trying to create a lot of space for his team actually doing a nice job getting some stickies uh, right onto that doorway now and Ukraine does does ultimately back out here, but this is the problem when you hold passively onto the second point, is it creates a really easy job for you to get spammed out because you basically have one choke area that you can push through here as uh, Cliffs just loses his advantage that he did have as Ankai is sitting at 100% Chris Krieg with Ali who's pushing up right now. Yeah, the Chris comes out from Sweden and the counter Uber does come in. No kills from either side. The Sentry doing a good job to push Ukraine back there. And uh, the Spy comes in. Vojak does get taken down there from the lock and load. Um, but Sweden do have decent ground. Oh, Ali, though, takes two black box rockets to the face, goes down, and uh, Sweden getting good time on the cart. 2 minutes and 22 to capture that second point is pretty fast indeed. Um, if they can keep this momentum up, Zebosite is just rocking this direct hit, getting so much damage, especially onto the heavy gun rocks there. He's really struggling to hold that on his own as he takes those rockets. Uh, but Twisted does go down to Nesh. Nesh is alive. No sniper to counter him as he just looked down there, takes down the Union with his first shot. And uh, Sweden just slowing things down again. They are going to get the Crooks Krieg before the Uber, um, but it is very, very close. I think Kalefsas is going to get it just in time. Um, and uh, it's all about this as the first crit sticky comes down, but the Uber is just going to be countered. Huge damage from death. It gets onto a nine kill streak, and Ukraine are just going to totally wipe Sweden wow. as they just clean up there with the Uber. And uh, Sigafi, that is why uh, Crits Krieg doesn't work against an Uber charge. Turns out in rock, paper, scissors, rock, 
beats scissors. As uh, we get that uber charge right there, nice job. I mean, if you can get the crits creek ahead of time, but you have to know what situation you're in, and if you have to know that the other team is going to get their uber charge at the same time you're going to get your crits creek, you can't push in super aggressively. You got to play it smarter than that here. As we are getting a re push here, as the respawns did come out fairly quickly, but Ankai already down to 60 HP. Spy is actually going to try to do something right there. Actually, right behind the mech, tries to find a shot and finally does do that. That's detailed with the uh, the pistol right there, taking him down as a spy actually that's Vidjack onto the cart. Does get that cart all the way up the hill already as the sniper is actually pushing this right here as Death's trying to get to it as the engineer is going to be pushing up, but the pyro is actually on flog right now. Coming from behind with the crit, trying to find something, but he actually does go down, but that cap did go down in the favor of the Swedes right there, and that's why it's so important to pay attention to the objective, because even though they were at a disadvantage in a lot of ways, they played that objective so perfectly that they were able to take it on an off uber push. Yeah, this is a really aggressive sentry here on the floor of last point. He gets taken down straight away as the Sweden just uh, walk in. Zebrasai using that direct hit takes it down. Um, and there is an Uber coming out now from Ukraine on Kyra. 99% goes down to the rocket. A 2k from Lippy there. The soldier for Ukraine does take down Onkaya, uh, but I don't think Ukraine really realized they backed off. That minigun can be picked up by Onkaya and watching it carefully, and uh, he should be able to just walk up here and pick it up at 99%. So that death not too uh, bad as Sweden get their uber charge now, and they can walk in with 100% advantage with Ukraine with a couple of players down now, and that kind of shows how odd this mechanic is, but they do use the uber charge upstairs. Um, but they're just going to be totally denied by Food Ration, the Pyro, and Death is just getting kills all over the place. And he's doing really well to just get kills on wow. the flag while the Uber comes in. And that kind of faltered from Sweden there. They're only three players up as Dito gets a double backstab on the Medic and the Heavy. And that just kind of turned into a fail push there as uh, Sweden lose so many players. They're just kind of a reset. Yeah, there's a bit of an odd push. I mean, I actually wouldn't say it was an odd push. I think it was just a better defense by the Ukraine right there. I mean, everything in the advantage of Swedes on offense right there, pushing through. Actually, as I say that, twisted, taking down Klefsis right there. So no med here on the defense, and that's going to give Ankaya a nice uber advantage here. As Klefsis is going to be on a slow respawn, about 10 seconds. Actually, I say that Ankaya goes down to death, so they actually end up trading their medics right there. Though I believe Ankaya should have still have a little bit of an advantage. As death does get taken down by Bijak, who just held that W key down but a lot of frags coming out in the favor of Ukraine. But again, that respawn wave, when you're on offense on this final point, respawns are incredibly fast, so every death you take, every trade you make, uh, is going to come out in the favor of the offense if you go down with somebody else. Uh, but right now, it seems like the Swedes are struggling to find their footing of how to push onto this final point. Four minutes and 35 seconds for the first three points. Pretty damn fast, but they can't seem to find that timing here right now as they're probably coming into about six minutes, seven minutes, about average. But the Swedes, they were looking above average for the last two rounds, but finally Ukraine is holding on to it as Eclipse is sitting at 100%. Yeah, Nesh is doing so much work at the moment. Him and Death holding in this top area. Nesh is just body shotting or headshotting anyone who walks in through the choke. He's just totally solid there, getting buffs from his medic as well. Klefsas well protected, he picked up his 100% medigun earlier on. Uh, Viljack behind though, takes down Gunrox, um, as Dito does the same, takes down Twisted. And we've been just poking upstairs now. The Uber is forced very, very early from Ukraine there, and Sweden just using Nezzy. Gonna have a better Uber as Klefsas has to drop down onto the cart. Herpy doing so much time. I'm on Anna, but Nesh is still upstairs hitting headshots onto people and the Union is just going to rush him and take him down. But lots of players down from Ukraine as Union is in such a good position up top. The P comes down onto Gunrox. He has to be careful. Any damage he takes now will be mini crits. Um, and they are holding this somehow with four players alive. Uh, that somehow they're going to be able to survive until the response. No, a sentry comes in, helps out to take down Gunrox as finally the combat from Sweden just helped push that car in. 7 minutes and 59 is, like we were saying earlier, pretty standard time, but I'm pretty sure uh, that Sweden would have wanted a slightly faster time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, of course, you you always want a faster time, but they def definitely were on pace. That final point, they just couldn't find uh, the feet underneath them, especially when they pushed in with a full uber advantage. And I can tell you that is very disheartening when you have 100% uber advantage and you just get stuffed by the enemy team. So Ukraine right there, uh, holding the Swedes to 8 minutes, basically 7 to 59 uh, as we come on to this second round. Sweden up 1-0 in this first map of a best of three series, and we're on a best of three rounds. Um, and coming, in, I was gonna say is I really like a combination of the heavy on that final push, 
The the Swedes had perfect positioning. They had uh, the heavy up in that upper balcony area. They had a mini sentry down in the main uh, push through area. And so anywhere you try to go on the cart, you're going to be taking damage from multiple sides. Plus you had the people on the cart. Um, just really smart positioning out of the Swedes there uh, on that final point here as the gates are starting to open out. Yeah, they're just kind of coming in from all angles. It really made it difficult. Ukraine kept so many play uh, four players alive for such a long time. But Sweden had their players in position. It was just like moving pieces around a chessboard before finally uh, attacking and striking. As the first casualty is Zebesai takes a body shot from Zebes. Uh, sorry, Zebesai takes a body shot from Nash, and goes down uh, for the defending team. But seven and a half minutes is a very doable time if you can crane, get some good momentum as they stack this car and walk forward. Nesh getting the headshot onto Twisted, dominating the Swedish sniper, and that's going to open things up. The medic surely going to be coming out soon. Just looking at Viljack now behind the medic. Can he get the back up? No, so close. Uh, but the medic does use his Uber as Sweden used theirs just before um, the unit had gone down, though. And Sweden looking like they might have to get out here, but no, Viljack the headshot takes down Klepsas, but Ukraine do manage to control. First capture point. Oh. So many players dead for both teams, and it's just chaos at the moment, Sigafu. Yeah, absolutely. Both medics getting traded out there, but Klepsis is going to come up a little bit sooner here as we have an incredibly forward hold out of the flank classes right now. Vil uh, Vijak, uh, Viljak, uh, Hirpi, and uh, that was Zebeside who were holding forward there, but the cart did go down. Ankaya just coming back up right now, but that's going to give Klepsis. Klepsis, uh, about a 20% uber advantage, not a huge amount, uh, only going to be a few seconds worth if they do it correctly, but probably won't here, as they are coming up over the hill, but I want to talk about that first point push, I don't generally like uber pushes from the flank side, but something that happened that was kind of interesting there, is that since they pushed the uber on offense on that flank side, it allowed less focus to be on the cart, and so they got to push the cart for free basically, which was an interesting idea, I never really thought about that. Uh, in terms of a benefit from the push, actually, as Herbie comes behind right there, 3k taking down Libby Clefis and D Toad as Gunrocks goes down to his sendery. And right there, just a, almost a wipe on the Ukraine team as the flank side from Swedes come in there and just clean up. Nice job. Yeah, Herbie is an absolutely amazing scout. Uh, one of the best scouts in Europe for sure. And he shows his quality there in this open space on the second map, on this hill area, just to walk forward and hitting those meat shots as Viljack gets a backstab onto Lippy, just going to slow things down for Ukraine. And this is what it's all about. Zebesai, look at the aggression. Gets so much damage onto Death. He has to back off for the heals. Um, but Nesh there with a the body shot onto Ronkaya. And Arty takes down Twisted. And things are just going to open up for Ukraine now as they take down four players from Sweden. And they have 100% Uber in their hands as Klepsis has picked up his medigan again. And that level three and uh, the, med uh, sorry, the demo man Ali is going to have to do so much work. Mint deciding to just take his sentry away as it got surrounded by stickies. The Yunin and the sentry are in this upper window area. They're either going to have to die soon or do something. But the Yunin's behind the medic. Gets so much damage down onto him. Can he do it? No, takes gets taken down by Arty Klefsas. He's at a 15 HP. Somehow manages to stay alive. Um, but that really did slow things down. Look how weak the Ukraine team are. As death goes down to a headshot from Twisted. And so many players getting cleaned up by the flanks. Zebeside with a couple there. Viljack taking down the pyro. And uh, again, it's just going to slow things down. Less than five minutes to go for Ukraine to try and capture this point. If they do not capture the last point within the next four minutes and 45 seconds, then Sweden are going to take this first map 2-0. We'll be moving on to Steel straight away. But Nesh seems to have the upper hand over this at the moment. Gets another, gets a body shot onto Ali as well. Two kills for him in a row. He's on a four kill streak. And uh, again, he's just opening things up for Ukraine. Getting those picks for Ukraine to take the space as Ehor takes down Zebesai. And the unit is going to go down here again, this time to Nesh as well. And Sweden having to back off, relying on their sentry. The Uber gets used by Ukraine. And Sweden not using the Uber until he's used on a sentry. And he's going to push people away as Gunrox falls off the cliff. Cliff Segafu and uh, Klefsas is lucky to escape with his life. Yeah, barely down to half HP there after that Uber exchange. is going to meet back up with his demo man, but that's... Oh! <laughs> That's actually, oh, that's, I'm sorry, I was trying to figure it out actually there is who was dying as I heard some headshots coming out in the favor that is Viljack uh, back behind the enemy lines but wasn't able to find a kill here as the cart did get pushed up a decent way. I thought they are going to do a little bit better with that push, uh, Ukraine that is, uh, since, oh no, as I say, the Nesh takes down Ankaya and that's going to open up. We should just see an off over push right now here as a sentry gun is still alive. That is the only thing basically keeping the Swedes in it along with the bodies forward, but not having those heals is going to work against them. But Ali is in a good spot right now. They 
need to take him down. He is a damage dealer as he finally does go down to death right here. It's actually the Heavy's going to trap them. Nice job that they're taking down death. And as uh, Clefsis is still alive, though, he was able to back out, did not get caught in the corner, but Hurt P and the Soldier are trying to get behind enemy lines, trying to find some... And they finally do, actually, as they say that Clefsis goes down, who's down to 40 HP. And, man, these flank classes for the Swedes, they are heat-seeking medic finders. They will do it, whatever they need to do to get aggressive and uh, get onto that. But look at this engineer pushing the cart uncontested. Nobody's contesting him. Now the scout's getting onto the cart. Finally, Delmon Alley trying to get some damage on there. But while this all went down, the third point goes down in the favor of Ukraine, and they have three oh, minutes the to comes push out. From Ascendary, he's using the flog, using that Scorcher to build up the inf, and then uses the crits, takes down Klefsas with the flank. Amazing play there from the Swedish Pyro. Uh, flog in competitive, guys. The Phlogistonator going huge there. As uh, Sorry to interrupt, but now 75% uh, advantage now for uh, Onkaya, but scratch that. Um, he goes down to Food Ration, and Klefsas has picked up his many guns, 100% so for him now. And uh, as Ali goes down to a Butter Knife, um, that's really going to open things up, but a few players down now for both teams. Uber comes in on the last point, but it's singled onto death. Can't really get much done as the Rockets come in. Zemosite takes out Clefsas with the uh, sorry with the black box, and uh, that's going to slow things down now. This engineer Eho has been doing so much work on the cart. Finally goes down to her P, but he was one pretty much solo cap that third point. Didn't get contested until the last second. Um, and the car has been moved all the way into this last point, but just under two minutes to go now. This is totally doable for Ukraine if they get a good push in. Yeah, and look at this pyro on the cart being uncontested right now. Sentry gun did go down there, as only the heavy is able to contest the cart, but the pyro can take a better damage on that. It's fine. Zebby side actually goes down to Nesh right there, and here they go. Pyro soldier in on the cart. Scout jumping on it. Medic actually going in as well. Pyro actually falls off the cart. Delman and Engineer are going to try to get onto it right now, as it's only the pyro alive. He's going to try to power jack, jump onto his cart, but he gets pushed off. The taunting demo is going to take it down there. And there we go, Ukraine taking the second round right there. And that was a little bit under, what, under, or a little bit over five minutes. So nice job there by Ukraine. Tying this up on this first map of a best of three, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, a bit of a surprise there. Sweden seemed to look in total control in that first round on that third point. Looking a little bit shaky on the third point um, on this round and just kind of giving up the picks. I really have to hand it to Nesh. He was getting those picks. He was getting the headshots, killing Twisted and killing Ali so many times, just opening the way. If you've not got a sniper or a demo to contend with when you're walking in, it's really, really uh, difficult to try and defend it. It just allowed the focus to be put onto the unit on, on Kaya. Um, and that just allowed Ukraine to just, like I said, the momentum. They used that momentum into the last point. Great work by Ihor as well. Got to give a shout out to him. He just managed to stay on that cart, get the pressure and just keep the cart rolling forward. Um, I think that was a bit of a mistake from Sweden. They didn't focus the objective enough. They didn't try to block it on third when it was just an engineer capping it. And they didn't try to uh, take down that engineer when he was just pushing it slowly into that last area. If you've got the car into that kind of flat area on the last point, that allows your team to just get onto it without much hassle. If it's stuck in the choke area, that's when you start to take a lot of damage. That's when it starts to become a little bit of a problem. But Ukraine using that momentum to get it in. And they have tied up this first map one to one. And Sweden on the back foot now need to start considering what they're going to do for this third round. Because moving on to Steel, they're going to want to, well, both teams are going to want to take a map advantage going into the second map. Yeah, and I mean, especially, do you know which team picked this uh, map coming into this finals? Do you know I things? don't know, but I'm going to say 99% sure that Ukraine picked steel, simply because Ukraine and Russia love steel so much, um, they practically <laughs> live there. Um, they they, so, they yeah. just live on that map, yeah. It's, a, it's uh, their kind of home map, so um, yeah, I would, I'm guessing that Sweden picked this map and that steel was picked by Ukraine. Badwater is just a, a random decider, it's the only map not picked or banned. Um, so that'd be the third map if necessary. Yeah, no, I mean it's just like uh, just incredibly great back and forth uh, out of these teams. I, I don't know, I was just excited by it. As Ness actually, we have the sniper uh, much more in the traditional American sense. Have the sniper top fragging uh, for that last game. Uh, Nesh, who did so much work, t so many medic picks at key times, and you know that's a big thing. Is I, I wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit at that third point. Is um, Ukraine struggled on that third point uh, in the first round or of this map is because. 
Allie. Allie just came through. He did a ton of damage. They stifled pushes. They're incredibly aggressive. But as soon as you take Allie down, or any demo man really, on that third point, it opens up that point so much to be pushed through. And in this last round, Ukraine pushed through. Allie went down right away. There was an uber exchange that happened. But like Sweden never really recovered from that. And then the medic went down on Kaya. Allie went down right away. And again, so now you have your medic and demo down on that third point of upward, like, you basically can't hold that unless you get really lucky or you have, like, exceptional positioning and a really bad push out of Ukraine. But Ukraine, they push through very consistently. And it just seemed like that is, like, it just seems, like, very consistent uh, pushing out of Ukraine. Like, nothing too crazy. But they just seem to be pretty smart about it. But they're getting the picks, you know, and I talked about this in the pregame, is that in big matches, you know, you need your pick classes to step up to the plate. And Nesh is doing that this game, or at least in this last round. And I, I think he was a really big deciding factor uh, in this point as well, I, of course, with the engineer who snuck, sneak capped that third point when nobody was looking, which is always something that is uh, under underrated, but I think really um, might have potentially even won the game. I mean, because nobody was paying attention at the time here. As we are getting going, uh, assuming we're going to get a team switch here, uh, as the medic is AFK and spawn, so I'm guessing we're going to switch teams, and that would put Ukraine on offense first if that happens. Uh, yeah, it's the team that uh, got the fastest time attacking gets to decide if they attack first or not. Um, it looks like Herpy has said we'll start on defense. So Sweden deciding to the first um, with Ukraine uh, attacking first. We will, we will see a team switch. But yeah, just to touch on those logs there, Nesh top fragging with 28, managed to get six med picks, um, which is absolutely insane. Uh, great work from him. Just to point out the difference, uh, just to expand on what you said about Ali, uh, the difference between him and Death this time, we talked about how Ali managed to get 5,000 more damage than Death in the first round. And this time, uh, Death with 24 frags, 10k damage. Ali languishing down at the bottom with only 8 frags. And I do think it was the focus on him, uh, especially on that third point, that allowed Ukraine to take the space. And it really shows in the logs. Um, and it looks like we have got finally the team switch. We have Ukraine in the blue. They will be setting a time. Sweden in the red defending. And uh, then we'll swap around. And how much do you think Sweden... like? The choice of crits in the second round, Sigafu, you talked about how you didn't like it, and it meant a kind of, uh, maybe possibly a slower time for them. Do you think that was the stumbling block, and do you think we're going to be able to see crits from them again in this map? I mean, I don't think it was like a horrible stumbling block. I mean, I think their their biggest stumbling block came on the final point. Well, and they also wiped there, and the wipe came from the crits creek. I, I mean... I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. Obviously, I think the Crits Creek kind of promoted a much more aggressive playstyle out of the Swedes uh, than when I saw them using Uber. But I think that if they take that aggression that they had with the Crits Creek, they change, they take that aggression, they put that on the Uber charge. I think they would have probably won that round or put up a faster time. But you know, it's it's kind of you know easy to say from hindsight uh, when you see the Crits Creek go wrong. But it's just it's an incredibly like for it to work out, you have to play it incredibly perfectly on a, uh, on payload offense, and it. They didn't, and they got punished for it. And ultimately, that might have been uh, the time that worked against them here, as we do have the gates opening up. This is going to be Ukraine on offense here, Sweden on defense. As uh, right now, nothing too crazy. Both teams just kind of jostling around. It's not uncommon to see uh, some suicide waves, but it looks like Ukraine's opting just to kind of slowly push forward. Yeah, an air shot there coming in from Zebasai to take down Death as he tried to suicide. And it does look like uh, players just trying to get aggressive, but Zebasai doing so much work there with the direct hit. Finally, he goes down there to Ehor, but got a three kill streak in the meantime, just totally stunting any suicides coming in from uh, from Ukraine. And Sweden looking a lot more serious, a lot more comfortable as Twisted gets a headshot onto Nesh. He's on a two kill streak, just slowing everything down. And uh, the more picks they get here, it's just going to force Kleftas to come out as he is very close, trying to arrow his team. He is out now. Um, Ukraine deciding they're going to stop with the suicide and they're just going to go for the push, getting aggressive on the tracks. But the drop comes in, twisted with the body shot, takes down Kleftas. Onkaya stays alive with 100% Uber, and Kleftas is going to need to get aggressive and get onto that medigun. Um, if he picks it up, it will not matter, but that is a massive, massive uh, slowdown for Sweden here. Yeah, actually, as Viljack is behind enemy lines, gets taken out by Nash there, almost took down Clefsis again here as he's running out to his medigun. He's going to try to pick it up without being killed. 
as Hurt P and Zivisay trying to find the medic, but Klefs has already picked up, so back at 100% here. And right now, what we need to do is, or if I was Ukraine, I would just get respawns in here, go trade Ubers, and then re-push right after it. Just push straight through the car, and they're doing just that. Here comes the Uber charge in onto the combo. Actually, enemy medic actually doing a really good job holding on. Finally, counter Uber does come off from the Swedes, but it's much, much better. 60%, but slowly dwindling down here as the heavy's the, oh, the closest one onto the car, trying to run away with the Fist of Steel, but finally does go down here as Death's caught around the corner, but he somehow stays alive as the heavy actually goes down for the Swedes here, and only a level one up here. Ankaya down to half health, eats another rocket, getting down so low, 31 HP, but somehow able to get out alive there as well, as well with Ali. So nice job there from the Swedes to get out alive as they were looking a little bit dangerous trying to run out on that cliff, but man, Ankaya, holy crap, did he melt that Uber charge on that first point. Yeah, absolute balls of steel there. Ukraine used it very, very early on. And by the time they were faced with the Swedish combo, they'd already used 50% of their Uber, and Kaya milked it till the last second. And uh, after the Uber charge was over, managed to surf uh, the damage all the way around. It was about 10 HP, surfed it onto the dispenser, boosted um, his health up a bit, and then managed to get out. But Zebuso is the only person who is down at the moment, stayed very far forward. And I really do think Ukraine have said to Ehor, stay on the cart, your job is the cart. You know, you sit on that cart until you die. You know, he is just focusing the objective so much. Uh, managed to capture that point, uh, that first point by himself once again. Nash on a full kill streak takes down Zebusai again. So it's going to be a little bit of a struggle as the, the uh, double dunk manages to push back the Ukrainian Uber slightly. And uh, once again, Onkaya milks his Uber, which gives a better Uber for the Swedes as, on, uh, as the Sentry just pushes people back. But good damage is down onto Ali. He has to back off here. And the Ukraine are doing the same thing again. They're getting the damage onto the Swedish players and then just waiting for the repush as the Swedes have to push back as Nesh wins the sniper battle again. The pyro food ration is on the car, but it's taken down by Zebusai rocking that shotgun. But only four players left alive for Sweden. They're going to have to back out here onto the third point now. Yeah, and actually, Ali down to 25 HP here. He's going to try to run out with his life, trying to put some stakies onto the cart, but there you go. He's finally going to get caught out, and I talked about Ali's a big part of this third-point defense, and he is now dead here, as this might allow an off-uber push here. As Delman, man, actually, that's death getting fairly aggressive. Actually, Spy in onto the meta. Clefsis gets one butter knife, actually one snipe onto it, and Bill Jack actually finishes that up. Nice three-hit right there, taking down Clefsis, and there you go. That actually might be enough for uh, uh, Ankaya to start try to do something here, as uh, the Spy for the Ukraines were trying to do something something onto the medic, but he went down. Klefsis might be able to pick up his gun if he's lucky, as we do have Ukraine Delman onto the lock and load, might be able to take out this gun easier. But uh, we got Ankaya sitting at 100% carts, uh, a little bit far back, being easily contested here. And now this is the danger that Ukraine has to be fearful of, is last time they were in this situation, which was the first round, they struggled and they struggled hard. So it'll be interesting to see what they do in here, but they gotta be careful too, because the Swedes have shown themselves they're not afraid to get aggressive. They're not afraid to go for the medic and just run straight forward here as Ankaya does have the 50% uber advantage that is slowly dwindling down. Twisted here doing a lot of work on the corner, being healed up by his medic, managed to take down two players there, uh, Lippy and Gunrocks. You can hear the headshot sound. He is landing the headshots. He's getting that damage on the Sweden get very aggressive with their uber. They're pushing all the way through house. Can they catch Klefsas? He is so far back onto the second point. There is a teleporter there next to Ali. He doesn't decide to a destroyer as they try to now. Um, Her P desperately trying to. Um, Nesh gets a body shot onto uh, Herpy to stop him there, uh, but Klefsas stayed alive, which was the most important thing. They're going to have 100% Uber for this ramp push, and Sweden do not have it. They're only at 50%. The unit so aggressive, takes down, uh, oh, almost takes down Nesh, manages to escape. This Uber is used, and Ukraine are looking around. They can't find the Swedish combo, and Death manages to only take down Viljak with all that. The unit drops down, gets a lot of damage on them, and they back out. And this is a really interesting hold from Sweden, but they do lose a few players. The Union and Zebusai going down, and this cart is being focused by Ukraine now, as uh, Herpy, Herpy goes down, and Nesh gets a headshot on Ali, and Ukraine gonna capture this third point now, um, but Sweden with the Uber advantage for last. Yeah, and that was a nice off Uber push right there. Um, I, I, I thought that was a pretty bad push um, from Death. Uh, with the medic they pushed in basically alone and weren't able to find any frags but you're also kind of alone you're not gonna be able to do much there uh, in that situation unless you're landing a lot of damage onto the combo which they were not able to here as you do have Ankaya sitting at 100% uh, they actually look like they're trying to peek around the corner see if they see the combo as class is coming in at this 90% as we should see an uber exchange here fairly shortly sentry gun in a standard spot but currently uh actually trying to figure out what's going on what are they trying to do here as uber does get popped off uh, from the suites as they 
across the point onto the heavy. Weren't able. Actually, it's an Uber exchange. Both teams did pop their Uber. Actually, it's a pyro here. Trying to run up over the top, trying to find something, but no damage that comes onto it here. As Ali actually gets taken down by Gunrock, who's trying to come in to some support here. And actually, it's just the heavy alone on this stairwell against the medic who. Looks like I'm trying to figure out who's going to come out on top. It is going to be the Ukraine here as her P actually gets a nice 2k, uh, two shot onto the demo man right there. As Viljax is trying to come around and he does ultimately clean that up with the help of Zebesite. And there you go, down goes Clefsis. And this might open up for the Swedes for good defense as that was quite the cluster of a fight happening in that upper area. Absolutely, that upper area just really, really just clustered with the amount of players as the sentry takes his medic upstairs. Onkaya picks up a little cheeky minigun pick up there. Picks up Klefsas' uh, minigun, keeps himself alive. He's now 80%. Klefsas did get an Ubersaw onto someone in that stairwell, giving him a 25%. But that is now to Onkai's benefit as he has picked it up. And he's going to have his Uber charge seeing Klefsas just approaching 50%. So it's going to take him a while as Nesh goes down to Twisted. No sniper advantage for the Ukrainians. And it's going to no picks from them from their sniper for a while as uh, they have to wait for him to. Sp and uh, now it's we're back to where we were before. This fight is in the choke area. And Ukraine need to find a pick, they need to find an opening somewhere as these Uber on Uber exchanges don't seem to be going to their benefit. Um, with Sweden in the upper area, the big P coming down and it actually manages to get the entire combo, uh, including Nesh, um, who does get a body shot onto Twisted. So that's maybe the opening Ukraine need now. Um, Ali has his sticky say, he's getting a little bit aggressive, gets a pipe onto Death, he has to fall back. Um, but now we're just at this stalemating moment waiting for Ukraine to do something as the Uber comes in very, very early and it's countered there by Sweden. Onkaya is going to be trapped here. He has to watch out. Somehow need that Grunrox needs to go down. He does go down. Um, and Sweden somehow survived with only one casualty to see for it. The big thing there, though, is Klepsis did stay alive here and that actually that Uber exchange did create a distraction that allowed the Scout and Pyro to get onto the cart. So they're pushing it right at the edge here as Ali actually down solo, actually grabs the med pack with the heals, was able to stay alive despite taking so much damage. But they did give up this upper area now. Actually, though, they're going to try to recontest this here as we're going to get another fight in such a close quarter area. It'll be interesting to see who comes out on top of this. And it looks like it's going to come out in the favor of the Swedes as Ukraine opt to back up. But Ankaya did go down from a nice body shot by Nesh right there. But death went down as well. So no demo man here for the offense. But 76% here for the offensive team. That's Ukraine here. As actually Zebicide's coming from behind. Actually cleft this down to 24 HP. And Zebicide down so low. But was able to find the final rocket. Taking down Klefsis. Who is so close. But might be able to pick up his gun if he plays it correctly. As the sentry gun is being wrangled. And trying to be healed up. But the save is not as powerful as it used to be. As it does go down. This cart is starting to roll back. But still, Sweden's holding on, but that is Alley down, and might op this might open it up here for Ukraine to push through. Yeah, like you mentioned earlier, oh, but the, sorry, the pretty shot there. Sorry, the headshot from Nesh takes down Twisted, and Gunrock just walks forward, takes down both Onkaya and Ascendry, coming in from the underneath, uh, the underground area. Great move there from Ukraine, and this has actually opened it up. Only Niyunin is alive. He drops down onto the combo, gets a lot of damage down, but doesn't manage to kill anyone, but gives time for Ali to spawn, and takes down Gunrocks. Klesas is on the car, gets an Ubersaw. Can he stay alive? And they are going to stay alive. 9 minutes 52, just under 10 minutes there for Ukraine. That was an interesting push from them just walking in from underneath, using that Uber on the heavy just to force themselves onto the spawn and uh, walking back around to the car and focusing the objective. This is the uh, this is a big thing for Ukraine. They seem to be focusing the objective very, very well while the Uber is coming in, while the kills are happening elsewhere. Somebody is pushing that card forward and it's getting them ground. It's getting them space to actually get the cap time um, and get the cap into the final goal. 9 minutes 52, slightly longer than we've seen... Um, before in Sweden's push, but definitely faster than the 13 and a half minutes we saw in their first uh, push. So, I don't know, I mean, Sweden not under uh, pressure perhaps, but definitely don't have an easy road ahead as they, you know, they didn't cap too quickly in the second round. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a time which is you know, you're not going to be feeling too much pressure to do, you know, uh, to, to be able to capture, but if you have one mistake, or probably a couple mistakes, you know, now the, the pressure is going to come underneath you. And so Sweden, I mean, they've been playing pretty effectively, but last time they put up a minute uh, time of nine minutes. So 
not too far off. Ukraine definitely can hold this here as we do have the gates coming down. Uh, Swedes are going to be coming out. Last time they've actually come out in Chris Creek. And you know what? Hey, if it doesn't work, try, try again. Prove the casters wrong, or at least me, as I am in doubt. But this is the heavy actually doing a good job as uh, Detoad actually takes down the unit right there on the side as trying to work up the sniper uh, over this cliff area. But Nesh does take down her P as a defense from Ukraine holding strong for the first few seconds. Yeah, that backstab from Deep must have basically, he must have given his team the information. As the crit does come out, and uh, the big crit comes down, takes down Nesh, but nobody else. Backstab from Viljack takes down Gunrock, so the counter Uber comes in from Ukraine. They're going to clean up a few players. The Sendry going down, and Onkaya did go down through all of that chaos. But Sweden with the better respawns are just walking forward, and you know, be great. Uh, positioning here, just using that Thomas Lab, you can have to snipe people from much more uh, further back. Viljack getting the uh, Ambi headshot onto death to take him down, and Ukraine already backing out onto the second point. The sentry goes down to Ali, and uh, Ukraine on the back foot already. That was less than a minute again for Sweden to capture the first point, but the stumbling block definitely was the later points. So they do have 100% again on the crits, walking into the second point. Klefsas only at 75%. The sentry goes down and the crits comes in, but there's no players to kill. As Ukraine have got out of that second point, Sigafu, and it looks like they're going to try and re-push once they get their uber, like they did in the previous round. Yeah, the same thing Ukraine did. Actually, this card is pretty far back right now, so it's pretty easy to defend. It's actually, Ali goes down right away. Ankai gets popped up into the air behind the house, actually down to 9 HP, slowly being refilled up, trying to run out through this cliffside. Is he going to be able to get out alive? Wait, he took up the ramp. The Heavy didn't see him. He could have easily been sniped there, but Ankai escapes with his life. Somehow, some way here is her P is the furthest one forward, but nobody sees it right now. But Nanunian is currently behind the enemy team, coming up behind with Viljack. Is he going to be able to find something here as he finally comes into the house, but he doesn't find the medic, but another heavy, and he goes down, but Ankaya staying alive there. I'm surprised nobody chased him. I mean, he was just a sneeze away from dying, but Ukraine lost track of him uh, and as he went out, and I don't even think he went down the optimal route. I, I I, I am shocked that he stayed alive here as they're coming at 100% and they're trying to take a little bit of a cheeky route But Ukraine's pretty far back as the first crit sticky does come in misses its target as a sniper second crit sticky onto the misses second target finds a little bit of damage onto the heavy But not much here as the pyro actually onto Ankaya does finally go down with the help of Nesh right there as a crit sticky is Uber, counter uber does come off onto this point and we're just gonna see a nice defense here out of Ukraine defending this cart Yeah, this is smart play by Ukraine. I'm just gonna be careful this episode comes in from behind Almost got Klafsas, but couldn't land the directs using that direct hit. But Ukraine, through all of that, did defend it using their Uber, but down to two players. Death goes down as well, so it's only Nesh alive now. He is going to be rushed there and finally goes down. Practically a wipe there from Ukraine. And uh, that's the big problem. If Sweden get the momentum and start walking forward, they do have the ground on the third point. It's going to mean pretty much a, a free cap for them on third as Nina gets very aggressive onto Lippy. Death is so far forward, he's just sticking up the drop down area. Manages to take down three players, Lippy, Arty and Food Ration, all going down with 20 second respawns uh, for Ukraine. And uh, Onkaya at 50% now, Klefsas lagging behind at 20. And uh, Sweden looking very, very good for this third point. Six and a half minutes to go. Nesh goes down to Twisted, and this is looking very, very bad for Ukraine. They're going to have to just get their players together, group up, and put all of their resources onto the last point, as they're going to have to hold it for six minutes. Um, they do have a level three on last already. They need to get their combo upstairs and uh, start getting ready for the nitty gritty and just holding this last point. Yeah, and I guess I was definitely too quick to talk there on that final point here as we do have the Uber Charge, I'm sorry, the Crits Creek ready to go uh, on the offensive here. Allie's right around the corner, does get the Crits Creek popped off, does take down the Heavy. Now it's Klepsis who's going to be running all the way out to spawn, misses the first sticky, but the Laser Beams now hiding behind the box. Nice job there by Klepsis being wise to take good positioning, able to keep alive there. And is going to get back to spawn uh, to connect with somebody else to start healing up here. But that third point did go down in the favor and nice and easy for the Swedes here as they have five minutes and 30 seconds to work with this time on the final point. But that is definitely holdable, uh, you know, for Ukraine if they play it correctly as this is quite a hard point to push into if done correctly as Dito takes down its mint on the cart. So that's going to slow down this push. But now we do have the Nuber charge out of Klefsis who's into 65 HP, gets forced off there uh, from the rockets of Zebuside. And now Ankaya is going to be sitting in nice and pretty here, but are they going to die? Do they see the combo right now? They're actually flanking them right now. Ankaya actually in a bad position, gets one sticky onto him, but somehow actually gets forced out there as the Delman Death got a little bit scared. And now the Crits Creek did get popped off onto Ali, 
and he's going to be able to stay alive, but he doesn't really find too much for that as it looks like we're seeing a decent defense out of Ukraine as they're going to hold on to this point, at least for now. Yeah, I'm really loving the way Sweden are playing at the moment. They don't care about the Ubers, they don't care about anything else. They're just getting aggressive, knowing that they have that spawn advantage. Three players left alive for Ukraine. Most importantly, though, Ihor is one of them as he's real winning his century. There's so many players on the car. If no one gets on there now, it is going to go to Sweden as they do finish that cap. And that is going to be two rounds to one for Sweden on this map, first map. PL upward. I'm going to be moving on to Steel and Sweden with the map advantage. And I just love the way that Sweden were playing there. They were just walking forward when there was no Ubers uh, in play. Their players, Ali and Eunan, just walking forward, getting so much damage onto the combo, onto the flank. And then their flank just walked in. Herpy and Zebosai just walked in, cleaned up on the kills. And getting those kills just allowed them to put them into a 20 second respawn. After that respawn, then Sweden could just re-push uh, with a Kritzkrieg in play. And like we saw there, ended up with only a few players left alive for Ukraine. And then to seal out that map win. And probably not as comfortable as Sweden would have liked or maybe they'd expected after that first round. But to get one map in the bag going into the next round, they're surely going to uh, put them in a pretty good uh, position morale-wise. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they. I mean, the, the exactly you know, kind of what I was saying in the pregame is that the thing that they did right with the Crits Creek is that it helped their aggression, and that's exactly what they did with it. I think they could have played the exact same game plan with an Uber Charge, and it would have worked basically the same. Uh, but obviously, I mean, it worked out for them. So who am I to say? Because you know, can't really fault things that work, and the Crits Creek in that final round did in fact work. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, you come in, you lose the second round, and to come out to that third round, and they won it fairly effectively. I mean, there was about, what, four minutes left on the clock? So, you know, you, you got to be feeling pretty confident here as we do come into Steel, which was uh, their actually comeback map. Sweden in the uh, the semifinals uh, playing against Russia, who's notorious for their, uh, as I like to call it, the cheese push, going from A to E uh, straight away. Uh, and Sweden actually got caught off guard by it. Uh, I think they let up a time of about two minutes and 40 seconds or something just crazy fast to the Russian team. They needed, they were on the last leg and they were able to withhold. Uh, they switched up their strategies, they switched up their players and ended up uh, coming back to win the rest of the, all of the rounds uh, and ended up getting into the grand finals that way. And so now, I mean, still, as you said, a little bit more of Ukraine's map, but Sweden, no slouches to it either. And it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, which team shows up, if uh, if it's going to be the first round against Russia or if it's going to be the second round against Russia. Because uh, when they were playing well on this map, Sweden, that is, they looked pretty dang effective. But I think it really comes down to uh, Russia when they played against them, Russia didn't have a, they didn't do a good job of adjusting. And I think that's what steel's all about. You can come in with the strategy, but you need to adjust that strategy as the game goes on because it is an evolving map. Absolutely. This is one of the most team-based maps there is. Um, just to cast a glance at the combined logs, shout out to Beep for combining those logs super quick. Um, across up with the highest frag was actually Nesh. Uh, with 69 kills, nearly 420 damage a minute. Um, just behind him is Ali with 64 kills, Death with 52, Viljack with 46, Herpy with 44, and Zebosai with 43. The flank for Sweden doing uh, great work there. Um, but yes, talking about this map, this is a funny map. I mean, if Ukraine, as I suspected, pick this map, it does surprise me. They did beat France on it, they did beat the USA on it, and um, I do believe they beat Denmark on it in the semi-finals as well. But it's a map that, I don't know, it can go either way. And, you know, notoriously, they're good at it as well. They have a lot of players from the Wasp, te Wasp team, players like Klefsas and such, who uh, play for Wasp in the Premier Division, who are known. And that's where kind of this stems from with the experience on Steel, coming from these Russian uh, Highlander teams who play Steel a lot, know the cheesy strats, and that's kind of evolved onto the Russian and Ukrainian teams uh, who've been playing in the nation cu Nations Cup. But Ukraine played Russia in the group stages, and Russia managed to post a 1 minute 30 time, something crazy like that, against them in the group stage. I mean, they got utterly demolished by Russia. Now, looking at the semi-final, as you were just talking about, Sweden managed to counter the Russian strats um, and managed to, you know, perform this miraculous comeback um, after being one round down to take two rounds and then go on to win the third map. 
So looking at it from that point of view, Ukraine lost to Russia pretty convincingly in the group stage. It's the only uh, match that they've lost so far in the Nations Cup. They did actually come out of that group in second position. Sweden not yet lost a match, obviously. Won all of their games in the group stage, won all of their games in the knockout. Um, but, you know, if you lost to Russia in the group stage on this map and then saw Sweden just outwitting Russia in the semi-final on this map, do you still think you'd be strong on this map? I mean, you've got confidence in yourself, but I'm not sure if it's going to be a wise decision from Ukraine. I mean, I guess it really just depends on, uh, you know, how Ukraine plays. As I said, I think Russia's undoing was not so much their cheesy strat, but their in the fact that they, anything besides that strat, they just couldn't do. They're just like, okay, well, they figured out how to stop, like, the push from A to E. Well, what should we do? Let's try to push from A to E. Like, that's that's what it kind of felt like that entire match, is that they kind of just did something and they had no clue of what to do if that didn't work out. And maybe it's just because it was one of the first times that a team actually figured out uh, how to play their flank effectively uh, on that side. Uh, you know, if I was Ukraine, if I was a strong map, I still would go with it. You know, Russia's a different team than us, uh, you know, and, and if we think that we're strong on it, you know, go with it. I mean... Um, especially it seems that the DM level of you know Sweden is pretty high, so taking this map, which is a little bit more team oriented, uh, you know maybe you think that'll work into your favor. Maybe you think that you have you know kind of better team uh, composition in terms of just like understanding like what you want to do and how you want to accomplish it. So I, I don't fault Ukraine for taking this despite Russia losing it, but it'll definitely I think it'll be very telling what happens in the first round, uh, in particular of how Ukraine plays because I'm gonna. I'm going to be kind of curious to see if Ukraine can evolve their gameplay strategy uh, or if they're going to kind of be a stick in the mud. And, and if that's the case, then uh, I don't have very high hopes for them. But and the other thing that I want to say for Ukraine is that Nesh has been doing absolute work for Ukraine. But this is not a very sniper-friendly map, and, and I'm kind of worried uh, about what that's going to do for the team if other players are going to be able to step up to the plate uh, since Nesh is probably not going to be as effective. That is something else I was going to say, Nesh. And like I said at the start of the stream, is probably one of the informed snipers uh, in Europe at the moment. Definitely standing out, playing for Stacked. There's a lot of hype around Stacked at the moment. Um, for next season in Prem, they've kind of updated their roster. Uh, but a lot of talk is going on about Nesh. He is doing so well as sniper at the moment. And his performances in the Nations Cup have just added to that, uh, that reputation for him. Um, and top fragging across that, despite going down 2-1 to one on upward, is pretty impressive. And I agree. It was another thing I was going to say. You know, Ukraine not, you know, being carried by Nesh, but surely one of their biggest uh, biggest advantages has been Nesh throughout this tournament. And, yeah, Steel isn't a sniper-friendly map. But then again, I've said that to people in the past. And I remember mentioning, you know, why would this team pick this map? And someone saying, well... You know, have you seen how much work people like Saini do on Steel? You know, people like to use the Machina at times, and that penetration damage does actually get quite a lot of damage on these choke points. And you know, maybe it's not as a disadvantage, a disadvantageous position uh, playing sniper on this map because one of the things I've spoken to many teams, and they talk about Wasp, they talk about um, Russia is that if you allow Morg, the Russian sniper, to get into the window where we can see Klefsas at the moment on the E point, um, if you allow the sniper to get there, then you're in trouble because it's so hard to dislodge them. They have such a good sight line over the BE connector, over the, uh, the white room connector, over the spawn door. So, you know, maybe that's Ukraine's thinking if they can do that. On the other hand, Sweden just produced probably one of the best performances I'd ever seen uh, in the semi-final against Russia. I mean, having gone 2-0 down on up uh, on Badwater and then a round down on Steel where Russia were overwhelming favourites, you would have thought most teams would have just rolled over and been like, OK, we've been, we've been done here. But they managed to just change things up. And I think their, their rotation plays was what won it for them. Absolutely. They had t a teleporter from It's Mint. You put a teleporter on the D point behind one of these metal shield areas and uh, that allowed for players to quickly rotate from B over to the E point. Uh, in particular, there was a Sendry who managed to rotate on the second round, managed to get a 3 or 4k, including taking down Shadowburn with a Reflect. I mean, that just totally stunted the, the push from Russia, allowed Sweden to have time to kind of rotate the rest of their players around. Yeah. If Sweden could do that here against Ukraine, um, then... You know, Ukraine are going to be in for long night. I mean, we're going to have a bit of a, 
a shout out for Ukraine, a little bit of a, I don't know, I mean, credit to them for getting this far in the tournament. Nobody expected them, other than a couple of players who said, you know, you know, yeah, they've got a, a chance to go. I don't think at the start of the competition, if you'd ask for surprises um, or any teams that you think would be in the final, Sweden was definitely up there as the defending champions. But Ukraine, um, I don't think anyone expected them to get this far. And to knock out USA, to knock out France, two of the overwhelming favourites, and to knock out uh, Denmark in the semi-final, who knocked out England, um, you know, they've done so much work to get here. They do have amazing players, players like Death, on demo and Lippy on soldier, you know, those classes can do very, very well on this map. And they're both very high quality players. And I think for me, those are the two players that we need to look out for, uh, for Ukraine on this map. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, they're definitely the underdogs in this matchup, but it doesn't feel like it. Uh, you know, even though they didn't perform so well, I mean, really outside of uh, a couple of those, I mean, I don't know, even though they're, they're losing and they're not uh, quite at the level of Sweden, it doesn't feel like they're actually that far behind either that, you know, a good moment or, or a big step up, uh, they definitely can, you know, step up to the plate uh, as they did in that second round on upward, taking one round against them and, and looked pretty dang good here as they did get the ready up started. So we are live. This is going to be, it looks like we're going to have Sweden on defense first and Ukraine setting the time on offense here as we do have a level three sentry gun uh, being built up, which does lend itself uh, to kind of that cheese uh, push. It's fairly unusual in North American scene uh, to see a level 3. I'm not a big fan of level 3s on offense uh, on Steel myself, uh, but they can work out, and if they do work out, it's amazing, but most of the time they do get taken out, but it depends on your team support and your play style uh, of a team. For defensive uh, engineer right now, we're seeing uh, a fairly traditional passive level 3 sentry gun. Uh, it's, we've seen a lot more traditional aggressive sentry guns, but it looks like we're going for a little bit more of the old school style here as the gates are opened up. Players are coming out as the A point is literally only being contested. I actually usually have your combo there just to do a little bit, but it's just Zebicide who's going to back up with his black box. Yeah, generally in the European scene, we don't have anyone on the A point. You just have a couple of players maybe to see what's going on, especially against a team like this where you're expecting that AE or the ABE cheesy push. The medic there, uh, Klefsas, is on the A point now. As that door opens, to talk about steel a little bit, as you capture the points, uh, more doorways open for you, more doorways close for the defending team. Uh, but the ultimate goal is to capture that E point. It doesn't matter how you do it. Um, as we see, Ali is here on the uh, the A white room uh, with his medic. They are expecting this cheesy push coming in from A. And they're defending it very, very well so far. Um, they do have a lot of their players here. Big WM1 coming in as food rushing does go down to the headshot from Twisted. But Sweden have rotated very, very well. Totally expecting this based on the intel from Herpy and Zebesai uh, who are watching the A point. And it looks like we might have a pause here. Yes, it does. And this is, you know, if I was going to play this aggressively with my combo, which I do not think is a wrong situation. I mean, look at where Ali's positioned right now. The only way that uh, Ukraine can get into this point is through this incredibly tiny choke point that you're going to eat so much spam, especially to a demo man. Uh, you're not going to be able to do anything here. But I think the important point that I would have is I would get my spy dead, um, sorry, cloak and dagger and sitting on the A point doing nothing but giving me intel. Because the biggest concern that I would have is that my combo is not going to be able to rotate quick enough to be able to deal with a rotation from the Ukraine combo on offense here. And so right now you can see Ukraine, they've already dropped down. They have committed to this B point right now. Uh, the sentry gun is pretty passive. Spy's in a good spot uh, on the offensive side to make a sap for it. But you only have the pyro here, and he's about to run into an Ubered, uh, like what, three, four people? Um, and so that is probably going to come down in the favor of Ukraine pretty easily. But, I mean, that's the big thing is you need some intel. You need something going on here to tell what is going on because right now Ali can get caught out here uh, as well with the entire combo team. But I do like that aggressive kind of style out of it. I don't know. What, do you, what are your thoughts for kind of this initial hold uh, from the Swedes? I like the fact that they've got players here. I'm worried for the fact that I think Ukraine are being extremely smart right now. Sweden are totally expecting the AE push. Sweden have reacted accordingly. They've got the teleporter from Its Mint in exactly the same place, so the teleporter exit, exactly the same place as it was in the semi-final against Russia, which allows for those fast, uh, for those fast uh, rotations over to the E point. Uh, but if we look here, 
um, on, on the white room, we've got the scout herpy, we've got Onkaya here, the medic, with his Demoman Ali, and they're being very aggressive. Uh, Zebrasai is in the white room with them, and Twisted is actually watching it as well with Niyunan in the spawn. So you've got the majority of your forces holding kind of the E area, and Ukraine have just been like, okay, so you're going to do that. We're going to use this newly opened doorway, go to drop down, and they're going to walk in there with their demo, with their heavy, with their, with their medic with Uber, and they're going to allow Nesh to have so much space using that Uber. And the only people defending B right now are Mint with his sentry and Ascendry the pyro. So if they can take down Ascendry early on, then I'm pretty sure that's going to mean Engineer down, Pyro down, um, and Sentry down, and that's going to be the B point for Ukraine. Uh, so, like you said, it's going to be Intel. If Sweden have no idea about this, the first time they're going to have is when Ascendry turns his head to the right around the corner, and he's going to see Ukraine pushing in from here. And um, I'm going to say that's pretty dangerous. That's going to allow a B capture at least, and it's going to mean Sweden have to rotate and go to defend C. So... Smart play from Ukraine. They've adapted. I mean, this is what I think Highlander is all about, and TF2 in general. You need to adapt to what the enemy team is doing, and that's what we saw Russia not doing in the semi-final. They would come up against, you know, what Sweden have got defending at the moment, and they would have said, "Nah, screw it. We're gonna we're gonna stick to our guns. We're gonna do it this way. Try to push through this choke point and fail." And it's what they kept trying to do, and Sweden just kept, you know, holding in that way. Ukraine have said, okay, so they're doing that. Let's adapt, and then let's go rotate to the B point through the fastest possible area. And um, with Ehor and Lippy here holding the A point, it seems like there's more of a presence than actually there is. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens after this unpause. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's especially like... I don't know, yeah, I'm just really going to be curious because the thing is, is that, especially in this point, is that it's really easy to shut down the defense on the B point. Um, and this is something that's really, uh, a lot of teams, I, I find that they don't really realize how bad their positioning is. But holding back, so right underneath this sign on the B point where it's E, uh, where you come out from spawn, um, kind of this over this overhang uh, where like the vent is and whatnot, if you hold back there, that's really easy to be spammed into, and you like you cannot leave that area. It doesn't seem like a choke point, but it truly is. And if you allow the enemy team to get in there, if they take down that sentry gun right away, which I don't see any reason they're not going to take down that sentry gun right away unless the spy uh, messes up his sap, you know, they're going to be able to shut down that corridor, and then they're not going to be able to be contested. Uh, you know, even if Ally does rotate in time, they're going to have to Uber through to be able to even try to contest this point, but... Um, you know, it's very possible that if Ukraine plays this correctly, they don't only have to use their Uber and they can just use it to counter pop. But I mean, I guess that is really the only possibility I could see here um, is if Ukraine uses their Uber and allows Ankaya to hold on to theirs and then they might be able to defend B. But if Ukraine plays this correctly, I think they might pull down this B point for free, which I, I think would be just a an amazing testament to their play style um, if it did happen, just because, like, you know, again, as you're saying, it's like it's all about adapting, it's all about adjusting, and just think about that, you come in with one strategy, then you come out with a B point for free because, like, you outplayed the enemy team. Like, who knows what's going to happen here as we are seeing at this pause, waiting uh, for the next bit of information for the go live here, but uh, early on, I mean, definitely already seeing the adjustments uh, with this. Yeah, it's going to be really important as well, these transitions uh, between the points, what the team has managed to do. I mean, for those of you who have not really played or understand Steel uh, in a competitive sense, people don't generally defend the A point. Um, it's very hard to defend as you can go through, um, you can attack the A point and the B point simultaneously. There is no restriction. So uh, people generally try to do, put most of their resources on the B point, defend that area, allow the A point to go down. There's not much you sacrifice by giving it up other than a couple of areas to walk through um, and then just try to defend that way and generally teams will try to capture the A point, then B, C, D, and then finally E. Um, but you can capture the E point at any time. Uh, so if you capture one of the points and you have a spawn wave able to go through to the E point, you can actually do it. Um, the more points you capture, the more spawn doors open for you. The fewer spawn doors open for the defending team. Your know, areas do get closed off for the defenders making it harder. Their spawn waves take longer. You know, there's up to about 25 seconds. It can be for the red team. For the blue team, after about the C point, it does come to instant respawns. Um, but it also takes longer for the E point to cap the fewer points you have in control of you. Um, so generally, P teams like to at least capture the A, B, and C point. 
the C point is pretty crucial as it extends some bridges across the E point, um, allowing the class that can't jump that far. Um, you know, you can get your demo, your soldier, your scout, you can get your pyro with the detonator to jump across onto the E point at the moment. Um, but it isn't until that C point is capped that the bridges come out and you can walk the uh, the rest of your slower classes like you know your sniper, your heavy, people like that onto the point. Um, and generally, yeah, we've been seeing teams try to go for these cheesy AE pushes where they just capture A and then go straight for E. But um, I mean, what's your preferred way of attacking? You said you're not a fan of kind of the AE push. What's kind of the norm for the teams you've played with when you're attacking? Uh, it's actually pretty. I mean, it switches a lot from your team. I'm obviously not in the combo, but. Uh, my preferred way of pushing is usually something where you take A traditionally, you take, you know, because it's uncontested. Uh, you take B uh, pretty traditionally as well. Usually what I like to do for taking B, work your sniper in the stairwell. Um, usually uh, the engineer as well with mini sentries works in the stairwell as well to create like a long sight line. Uh, and you just try to overtake that lower area. Try to, and, and then with the sight line of the sniper and the engineer, you kind of push out the enemy team. Uh, you have to work with your spy. Very important on the B point to work with your spy to get that sap down exactly on time to take down that sentry gun so it's uncontested. Because when you are taking the B point, you are working from a lower to a higher ground, so the advantage is slightly to the, the, the defenders. Um, and then really from there, uh, I think from the B point is where the game gets really creative because I don't think there's inherently a wrong way to go about things. I do think that the AE push uh, from teams who are competent is an incredibly hard thing to pull off uh, effectively because you're kind of relying on either having exactly the perfect hold and getting exactly the right frags uh, or working against a team who just does not understand how to defend against that. Um, and when, once a team understands how to defend against it, I think it's a very easy hold to just continually uh, stave off. Um, and so once you capture the AB then, uh, usually, I think the best strategy is to put some light pressure on the E um, and then kind of see what happens. So, um, as we said, um, you can go from capture E at any point, but the bi big thing that happens in terms of Highlander is you have one combo class. And rotating from corridor to corridor when it comes to steel is an incredibly long process. There is not any quick routes. You can't teleport, uh, like, you know, really. And so really, if a combo, let's say you have your combo on defense on the C point, and then the E point's being captured, well, now your combo needs to meet the other combo, and how they end up doing that uh, tends to fluctuate because sometimes you want to go through spawn or you want to go through the BC connector and take a fight, and it can happen a lot of different ways, but you're kind of forcing a fight to happen. And so basically what I like to do is, yeah, it's basically that. So take A, B, put some pressure on E. If you are getting some good luck with E, then hold E aggressively uh, and, and try to actually just win the game right there. If you are taking E and they start to they rotate their combo over to E, then send your combo to C point and, and take that for free because now the C point should be a pretty easy capture since the combo came over uh, to the E point. And that, that's like how I like to play Steel basically is – just take what the enemy team is giving us and then work off of that. Rather than coming kind of in with a set, set strategy, really your strategy needs to be whatever the enemy team is doing to try to work off the opposite of that. Uh, and, and so that's kind of like my traditional way. And so it's like always trying to keep some pressure on E, always trying to work your flank classes to put that side pressure on because the more time you have pressure on E, it's kind of like the spy play we we're talking about before is that when you have that annoying factor, that annoying thing that you have to pay attention to that you don't traditionally play, pay attention to, it just keeps, it creates this constant distraction that, that doesn't allow you to focus on the game. You can't just always focus on one point. And that's what makes Steel interesting. That what, that's what makes Steel uh, lead to incredibly interesting games just purely because you can never keep your focus on one thing. And so it forces teams to always be, always be on their feet. And so my preferred offense is to just try to do that. Always keep the defense on their heels. Always trying to keep them running around. Keep good intel on where they are and then work to the opposite of that and, and take uh, what they're giving us for free. Absolutely. I really like I mean, it's pretty much the same as um, you know what we've just seen. I mean, payload and attack defense maps are totally different um, in the fact that the objective is basically different, but they're similar in the way that you need to take the ground that the defending team gives you. And like you said, if your teams, if the team you're playing against is giving you space, you know, on the E point or on the C point, whatever, you try and take that ground, put pressure on that area, and um, you'd be surprised at how effective it can be. Um, but the distraction, I think, is the biggest point um, of this map, the biggest thing that you need to do. There's no point in pushing into C point if the entire enemy team is there. 
Um, but if you put like your, your soldier, your scout, pillars like that onto the E point to at least get the capture going, um, then that's going to spread the forces because then if your combo pushes into C and you know the team defends, it doesn't matter if your your flank is capping the E point and they manage to finish it off. They have to send players over there to stop that capture. It makes your push into the other points easier. So really, it's about you know coordinating different groups of your team together. Um, as it does look like we have on pause now and uh, we are continuing this as Ukraine do come through the drop down and they are pushing onto this B point now so, oh excuse me so much pressure as the backstab from Dito comes in so many players they don't even have to use the Uber and Union, Union has rotated um, onto this B point and Onkaya has come down now we might see an Uber exchange here but Ukraine have got so much ground Uber comes out from Sweden first um, but it does look like they're going to use it to escape as Ali can't really do much against the Uber players times 5 on the point Sigafu and it turned out exactly as we expected it I just want to say, called it. I called exactly that. Like, that they would come out, they'd get stuck in that choke area, the sentry gun went down, they didn't have to use their Ubers, Ukraine pre played that absolutely perfectly, actually here, as we have Zebstad coming behind enemy combo, Klepsis down to 6 HP here, slowly rehealed, grab the full med pack here, but look at the C point, already going down in the favor here, but we do have a heavy combo trying to contest this, but the demo man doing a really good job, that is death, uh, contesting the mountain, and now he's going to sticky trap this spawn door. Uh, he's actually going to back up to this point, but the C point coming down uh, in the favor right now of Ukraine, but it's going to be contested here as Ali is coming out onto this platform area. Is going to be seen finally getting some sticky damage, but it's only hitting the heavy right now, and that's not going to be enough here as Clefs is coming in at 95% as we get the second pause on this game, but already Ukraine looking incredibly strong as they play this perfectly uh, so far. Yeah, I really do think this is throwing Sweden off guard. I mean, they're expecting, like, I don't know, like, we're expecting, like, the viewers, I'm sure, are expecting that cheesy AE push we you always see from them and from the Russians. And they've just gone, okay, we're going to play it differently. Um, we're going to adapt to what Sweden are giving us. Like you said, you know, whatever the team's giving you, take it. And they gave them the B point pretty much. And they've given them the C point. There's been no defense there whatsoever. Ali's trying his best, but from the position he is in, he cannot do it. And death has the spawns locked down. And that C point is going to go down. It's not going to be a very fast time. Um, I mean, it's not going to be a very slow time. It's going to be a fast time for Ukraine to just to capture those two point, uh, those three points. And the C point is so key. Like I was talking about earlier, it does extend the bridges, but it does lock down so many spawn doors. And it's at that point where the spawns start to turn to about 15, 20 seconds for the defending team. And they become instant for the attacking team. So every exchange you make, every trade you make with your life, um, is advantageous to your team because you know if you kill down the opposing class you're going to be spawning much much quicker than the enemy team um, and Ukraine are just doing very very well at the moment and just doing what we kind of call the alphabet push going from A, B, C, D and E um, and I don't know I think Ukraine's biggest weapon um, is the fact that teams have underestimated them perhaps I think uh, a lot of countries have thought Ukraine aren't, you know, a big name country that people would have thought they would have been winning or challenging for the competition. And they've come into this and been surprised by the fact that teamwork-wise, they are up there. They're doing very well. And they have big name players, you know, the likes of Nesh, the likes of Death, the likes of Lippy, players like that who are doing absolutely amazing work for them. And they're being surprised. I think that kind of took into play on the second round of Upward. You know, Sweden were in total control and then Ukraine came out and just showed, okay, what you can do, we can also do, and managed to get a round off. And it didn't work out for them on the first map, but if they can stick a round up on the board already on this uh, this first round of steel, it's going to put Sweden under pressure. And, you know, talking, I don't know if anyone saw on etf to well the interviews between the two captains, Nguyen and Klefsas, uh, Nguyen was asked, like, what are your thoughts on Ukraine in the final? And he said, you know, at the start of the competition, I did predict that there would be a team that could do well. Didn't think they'd get into the final, but did think they'd be a kind of a dark horse. Um, but he was more worried about playing the likes of France or the USA. He's much more comfortable, and I assume his team is as well, with playing Ukraine in the final. Um, and again, maybe if Ukraine can pull off a shot here and get a round, and get a foothold back into this final, um, they can get the momentum for the third map. I mean, that's quite a while away, but you know, so far they're, they're doing well. I mean, it's, I mean, kind of what we were talking about uh, before and upward and, and, you know, kind of with this different stuff when it comes to TF2 in general. Uh, but I think in Highlander, um, it, it is especially true, which is that, you know, the best Highlander teams and the best teams I've played for, they 
win games because they take what the other team is giving them. If the other team gives you free ground, what do you do? You take that free ground that the enemy team is giving you, and you don't let off the pedal. You always are aggressive, uh, and you're smartly aggressive. So if the enemy team is giving you free ground, you take that free ground if you have that position, if you have the players to do that. And we see Ukraine doing just that. And I love the fact, but I, I want to kind of go back to, you know, that A point and what happened with that hold. And they did stop the cheesy push, uh, push uh, on the, uh, what do you want to call it? Sorry, as the C point does go down here, as the man did go down. But they did stop um, the A push from coming through here. But the big thing that happened is that if they had a spy to be able to call that, I think this game would be incredibly different playing here. As Uber actually does get forced off from Zebicide, who came by, uh, behind the enemy lines here. As the medic's actually running away, almost got pushed in to this pit here from the pyro. But, I mean, really, this this map is a lot about intel, but Clefsis actually did go down to Vision, Viljack right there. So nice job from the spy. Uh, and actually, the gun probably will not be able to be picked up here as we see some aggression here from the enemy combo. And I think that's partly just to protect uh, Ankaya uh, from being able to pick up this gun for free uh, as it's sitting right behind him. But he, I'm surprised he actually hasn't picked it up yet. Yeah, maybe he's not aware or maybe he decides to just stick with his own minigun. Um, but I think the key point now, I mean, A, B, and C has been capped by Ukraine. Looking very, very good for them. Only taken uh, a couple of minutes to do that. I'm not sure as my HUD uh, is kind of broken. But I think the important thing now for Sweden is to control this white room as they do use a conch to try to get a bit aggressive on this A point. Maybe catch Clefts as that as he tries to get away. Um, decides to come back in. Aggression coming in from Zebesai gets a rocket onto him. But Clefts are staying just out of range. And uh, they are kind of trapped in here now. They're trapped in the A point. They can't actually get back or away. And uh, this is really good from Sweden, just locking in the Ukrainians. Klefsas at 100% picks up that sandwich to uh, keep his uh, uh, Uber charge. And he does use it very aggressively. And all that's really going to achieve is to take down Zebesai. Sweden backing off out of the white room. Um, and they mm. do counter. And this is what I mean. If they can control this white room, they can control the axis from A onto E. And uh, their flank can control the rest of the areas. I think Ukraine actually got exactly what they wanted out of that situation. They're going to repush this off Uber. I think they just wanted to get the force and then repush this because the trades are going to come out in the favor of oh, Ukraine. Oh, Viljack! It's a backstab. It's a backstab yeah. onto death and guns down Klefsas with the Ambi. That's huge from the Swedish spy. Sorry to interrupt, but Sweden regained control of the White Room. Yeah, and, I mean, Viljack was pretty much the saving grace right there. But if you think about that situation in terms of Ukraine, they trade Ubers. Now you have, uh, you're pushing in. You're in close corridors, you're not in a bad position, but that allows you every trade that you make in that situation, now that you're uh, pushing off Uber with the same amount of players, same health, every trade you get in that situation is going to come out in your favor because every respawn is going to be about 15 to 25 seconds, which in terms of Highlander is an eternity. And your respawn wave when it comes to offense is seconds. So here we go here as we, it looks like we're going to see a push uh, a little bit more from the B side here is an oh soldier is going to be contesting this point. Actually, his alley does go down from a nice headshot and now on a 17 second respawn wave as we're getting some contesting from the C point here. Looked like the Devil Man are coming through the spawn area as Viljack's actually trying to make a play into the combo, but he gets killed right there. Nice play by Gunrox. But some frags coming out in the favor of uh, the Ukraine side as they're trying to find a way into this point, but nothing so far here. And they got to be careful about their positioning because they could get caught up pretty easily. Yeah, this is all about getting flanked now, as uh, Herpy does a great job taking down Food Ration. He's on a full kill streak. Should be able to take down Nesh. No, takes a, a Bushwhacker to the face, but the double oh. backstab from Dito takes down on Kaya in a unit. That's going to really open things up for Ukraine. So they've got times three on this D point now. Viljack doing his best with Mint. Oh, Klefsas goes down to the headshot of Viljack. So clutch there, and surely death is going to go down here as well. He does another ambi shot from the Swedish Spike takes him down and that D point has been protected now by Sweden and they're in the same position a lot of frags going down and Ukraine are taking this white room coming back into D um, but Sweden have their combo here and they're starting to push back out into this open area Gunrock's so weak a sentry with the extinguisher when was the last time I saw an extinguisher kill in Highlander he takes down Klefsas again and Sweden looking in control it's just retaking their ground so easily now Sigafu it's like they don't mind giving it up because they they know they can re-push it yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they want to play this right now as uh, they did lose a few on the flank side here as a soldier that's Zebby side is actually playing with the combo, um, getting pushed back here, but back onto the D point. This is a time when Ukraine needs to put pressure onto this E point. Look at where everybody is for the uh, Swedish side. Almost nobody's protecting this uh, 
actually, I guess they, they did swarm their flank now onto that point, but I don't know. I feel like you're not going to be able to push this. Oh, Clefsis goes down to alley again. And that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be no good. That actually might have even been a roller there. I'm not exactly sure what exactly that was, but Ukraine can't just seem to get their feet underneath of them. But I really think if they put a strong push onto the e point, it would create an interesting dynamic uh, that would have to be responded to by the Swedes. And I'm not sure they could because they're holding so aggressively on this d point. Yeah, Ukraine have this level two now. Seems to be a level three in the white room, and they need to up their players a little bit, get some pressure on D and E at the same time, really split up the defending forces. Um, at the moment they can just solo them onto this as the Ubers are exchanged. But Ukraine use their Uber and then just back off. Um, they take down a couple of players. Death might get caught out here again by Ali. Um, the pipes miss though. Death is so weak. It's 5 HP just hiding in the corner but he does manage to survive. Links back up with uh, Klefsas as Onkai goes down to a backstab from D Toad. Getting another med pick, doing so well, uh, doing pretty well so far in this game. Times four on the last point. The players are weak food ration, only at four HP. Just to get so aggressive, just pushes people back. He's going to take down Ali. He's going to take down a few players. Great play there by the pyro. As Death comes in and follows up with a few kills of his own, and it looks like Ukraine are just focusing on the E point now. They got their level three there. They got their combo on the point. That mini sentry is not going to do much against the minigun of gun rocks, and it looks like Ukraine are actually going to finally capture this E point. Sweden unable to defend it, and I can't see the time. I will have to update my uh, HUD, but maybe not as fast as we may have thought at the start, but it seemed it's, pretty it's, decent in the end. Yeah, actually, 8 minutes and 23 seconds, so that's um, not slow. I mean, I guess it's a little bit on the slower side. I'd say about 7 to 8 minutes is a round average, uh, at least in the North American side. The last time I played, uh, 6 minutes uh, could go down that favor, but... Really, Ukraine right there, I mean, they kind of did exactly what uh, I thought they should do, which is put some pressure on the E-point. They overwhelmed the flank. Um, they had about four players, uh, the Swedes did, on that flank side, but they eventually got the trades to go out in their favor, the respawn waves to go out in their favor. And as soon as you do that, that times four onto that point, that forced the combo to have to go from D to contest that E-point, but due to the positioning and the way Ukraine handled it, it worked out perfectly with the level three sentry gun that, you know, I was talking down a little bit, but it definitely, you know, if, if you can get it into that sneaky position, it can be incredibly effective. And it actually picked up two frags there. As the gates are opening up, we're gonna see the Swedish coming out here on offense here. First round on CP Steel. Swedes up 1-0 on this map as well in the best of three series. So everything is on Ukraine right now to be able to do this. As the Dome Man jumping in over the top, he gets taken out instantly by the level two sentry gun. Yeah, Sweden decided to just send their combo straight on to B. Um, on Kai there, trying to buff up his players, but both of the uh, combo players went down as the A capture point is going to go down. Mint deciding to run mini sentries while he's attacking. A bit different from Eeyore, who was using the level 3s when he was attacking. And it doesn't look like Sweden are going to go for this kind of uh, A push. Um, they are getting some aggression onto the connector area, but it's being held off there by Artie and Lippy holding the white room. Uh, Death does go down there to her P. Good aggression from him. We've got a really aggressive level 3 from Ihor, um, which is good. Takes down a Sendry as he comes through the drop down. Um, and Sweden are going to have to use the Uber rather early if they're going to take it down. The Conch comes in though, gets really aggressive, and Ali does take down that Sendry with the sticky spam. And uh, Sweden are all in the faces of Ukraine, forcing that Uber and backing off. That was such a great move by them um, without using Uber or having to use Uber at all. Dippy gets a couple of kills on the flank, but Sweden are just walking in onto this B point. Big jump in from Lippy does take down Onkaya. That is a saving grace for Ukraine, and they're going to retake control of this B point. And it's uh, starting to look a little bit better for them. But Sweden are just walking back again. Death goes down to his mint with the shotgun, and Sweden just taking control of this B point. And it's just these transitions are just going huge for um, Sweden. But as I say, that Dito gets a double backstab onto the demo and the heavy. Uh, but I do think Sweden are going to be able to capture this B point now. And, you know, I love this play out of Sweden is that, you know, a lot of teams tend to struggle because they just are like, oh, okay, or, you know, we pushed and it failed, or we pushed and we lost two people or something like that. Sweden did not take their foot off that gas pedal. They kept taking ground. And what seemed to be a bad push, or, you know, at least they lost their demo man and heavy from a nice double backstab. Uh, they just kind of kept pushing as Clefsis goes down again. And he just cannot stay alive. Nice stab there by Bill Jack, uh, taking him down. And so that's going to open up the C point, which should be taken out pretty dang easy. As we're sitting at 6 minutes and 15 seconds in, I mean, Swedes are looking incredibly good right now here, as they're going to have tons of time to work with to take down the final point. Yeah, their combo's already um, walking forward on Kaya at 100%. Um, Zebesai does go down, though, to death. 
Um, and Ukraine are getting aggressive with this. Might be a mistake. Lippy, though, gets a few kills there. Um, Gunrocks does go down to Union, but forces the Uber from Sweden. Um, a few players go down there, but uh, Ukraine probably pretty happy with that trade. Forcing the Uber, that means they can defend D uh, with having to face uh, a versus non Uber push. Sweden just starting to come in through the BE connector, getting some aggression onto the point. There is a level 3 in the window from Eho. He is just focusing down the point. Oh, pushes Ali! He got a sticky there. He needs a, some help. Otherwise, he's going to fall into the pit. Death gets him down with the sticky anyway. Um, and the sap comes in. No, it doesn't. Viljak goes down to the rocket from Lippi. And Ukraine are focusing all of their attention on this E point now. They're going to want to defend this. And their combo is holding on to uh, D as well. So... Decent hold from uh, Ukraine at the moment, but they've got 5 minutes and 10 seconds to hold out. And it's quite a long time. That's at least 3 or 4 uber pushes from the Swedes. Yeah, absolutely. As we have the Billjack actually seeing around, the sentry gun does get the sap onto it, but the pyro's right there to help out, and that gun's going to be unsapped in time. Combo actually is pushing all the way from the D corridor. They're actually on to the point on Kai Sian at that 100% Klepsis does pop his uber as a conk does come out from Zebu's side, who's doing a crazy amount of damage this game, actually top damaging for the point, but look at this heavy actually in a pretty good spot, decides to back off here as a backstab comes in, detoed with a nice stab onto him. It's only the Demo Man Heavy, and actually here you go, the Heavy coming in from behind, actually now the Demo Man and uh, Soldier Scout should be caught out here pretty easily, and we're going to see a defense, but Klefsis did go down there from a nice uh, kill from Ali, so that might open it up here as he is going to sit in at a long respawn, 17 seconds until he comes back alive here, and actually as I say that, the Swedes are looking great right now, everybody is alive as there's only four alive here from the defensive side, four minutes and 15 seconds left in the clock, ticking down but the deaths are coming out so heavily in the favor of the Swedes, I can't see how they're not going to win this round. Yeah, that was a great movement there. The Swedish boy using the Uber onto D, and then rotating around onto E. Filjack getting the sap onto the sentry, and Onkaya with the Crusaders crossbow took down Ehor, the engineer. Um, that enabled them to just spread their forces across the two points. They're just focusing on E now, and I don't think Ukraine are able to even get their players close to the point uh, before it goes down. Just under four minutes to go for them, and it is going to be going to Sweden. They take the first round of this second map, and they are one step away from retaining their title, being the first country to ever win two Nations Cup, more Highlander Nations Cup uh, titles in etf 2 l um, And they looked pretty solid on that map. So if, I mean... We, th we think Ukraine have picked this map uh, as their map, and we've read it up already. Um, and then we are going to have a map switch, uh, sorry, a team switch, so that the Swedes attack first this time with Ukraine defending. But it looks like both teams are keen to keep their momentum and get underway. Um, what do Ukraine need to change here uh, in order to do something? I mean, you're one map down, you're a round down on the second map. If they lose this round, that is it. They are second place, and Sweden are going to be Highlander Nations Cup champions. How, if you're the captain, if you're Klefsas, uh in the Ukrainian team right now, what do you say to your team in Mumble? What do you mix up a bit to make sure you get this second round and s somehow turn things around? Well, first I would start by putting some inspirational music in the background. And then, no, uh, the biggest thing I would take to my team is just that we need to start taking... Uh, playing a little bit away from the team. They butted heads for so long in that AE connector uh, against the enemy combo and was, weren't able to do anything off of that. If the enemy team's holding in the AE combo, that means that you can take the B side for free. I would do that, especially after you already capped the C point, the bridge is down. There's no real reason to try to just keep butting heads. It's, it's fine to give it a, a go once or twice, but on the third time, you need to change up. You need to do something differently here. As the gates are opened up, we do have Ukraine on the defensive side. We'll see what they can do as they did not look too good. Ali gets taken down uh, right away, but Viljack actually almost gets a backstab there on Klefsis here. The A point is going down in the favor uh, quite easily as it's been uncontested. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing for Ukraine. It's just making sure that we're adjusting and not giving up free ground. Try to contest it. I felt like uh, last round in Ukraine, they kind of backed up too much defensively and allowed the Swedes too much ground for free. And the Swedes, as they've been playing very aggressively, they're taking the ground that they've been given for free. And actually, we see the enemy uh, Swede combo. They're actually going uh, through A. Are, are they going to do a, a full-on push? I mean, they have about uh, six to seven players right now, and they very well might be going for this A push. It'll be interesting to see if they can pull it off. They've got there pretty easily so far. They do have control of this E point as uh, the Uber comes out from Ukraine trying to defend it. Uh, but they've got nothing to actually shoot. There's nothing on the point. And the Sentry is being Uber. He's just pushing people into the pit. Death falls into the pit. Gunrocks takes a no! headshot from Twisted. And Klefsas goes down to her P. And this is just 
Amazing aggression coming out from Sweden right now. Headshot from Twisted takes down Nesh in the spawn. This is the window that I was talking about. Once you get your sniper in here, it is such a difficult thing to get him out of there. He can watch all the way across the point, across onto the spawn door. The spawn door that Ali is actually sticking up as Artie comes in, trying to take down Ali, gets him pretty low. But there's times three on the point. This point can go down pretty quickly unless you can do something about it on Kai. It's pretty weak, but he does have 60% Uber in the bank already. Viljack gets a back up onto Gunrock. So oh there is so much time God. on the E point. It is going to go down straight away. And oh. Sweden oh. capturing 1 minute 44 seconds. That came out of nowhere. And Ukraine are. Oh, they're on the edge. Oh my God. That was insane. That was Sweden doing it to perfection right there. And this is exactly what we were talking about, is it's taking what the enemy team's giving you. They had nobody protecting uh, that A side. I don't even know if they were called out in time. And then the biggest play that came out of that, though, that was definitely uh, came from uh, Ascendary, who, the pyro, who ended up taking down the, the demo man and then the medic as well, pushing both of them into the pit. That opened up hugely because the easiest... Uh, person to defend this E point is a demo man and then obviously you want your heals and as soon as they took down those two classes everybody was in already the perfect position because that's the thing that I loved out of Sweden is they decided that they wanted to go uh, for this cheesy push but they had everybody in position before they executed it uh, amazing job by everybody involved in it they all knew what positions they needed to take they did it incredibly effectively and honestly this I can't see any way this isn't a swan, swan song for Ukraine here as we're seeing a heavy defense on the A side uh, you know, purely because there's nothing else for them to do, but what an incredible push out of the Swedes. And if anything, I think feel like it's kind of poetry, given that that's the way that Ukraine, that's the way they almost lost to Russia. This is the way they're going to end the season, more than likely, unless Ukraine pulls off something absolutely amazing. Uh, with a minute, 15 seconds left on the clock, I, I just can't see any way that Ukraine can do this. But uh, you know what? Maybe they're going to step up to the plate here as the point is being contested. Oh, Klefsas though, it's down to the backstab from Viljack and the Uber is used on the A point. Sweden with the hefty uh, A defense there, and basically it just slowed them down. They just, it was a busting of heads on the A point between the two teams. And uh, if uh, Onkaya is smart, he does pick up that medigun, gets another 100% Uber with 49 seconds left on the clock. He has an Uber charge to just defend this A point. Sweden just can keep their players, it is just a death match now. This is basically just fighting as Zibasai takes down death the uh the demo man for ukraine i mean even in the chat after that push there um from the swedes uh nesh and arty both saying well done well played um even they had to admire the great play there in the attack as herpy gets a five kill streak taking down food ration and uh, the ggs are coming out in the chat as it is physically impossible for that e point to even be capped with 15 seconds left on the clock sweden will be the highlander nations cup champions for 2015, uh, the first team to ever have won two Nations Cups in the Highlander format, um, and obviously winning them back to back, having been won it last year. They have won Steel two rounds to zero after taking upward 2 1. And uh, I don't know, I mean, I agree with what you said there, Sigafu. There is no way better way to end the grand final than that, having that amazing push from the Swedes after we saw them pushing A through to E in the first round. That came pretty unexpected, and they maybe, maybe Ukraine didn't even realize Sweden had that in their arsenal. Yeah, I mean, I definitely didn't think they did, but I mean, I, I'm sure Ukraine's in the same boat. And you know, I kind of talked about it in the, in the first part, which is that this map, it's very important to have that information and understand what the enemy team is doing, uh, because if if they knew that the enemy combo was pushing through from that east side, uh, you know, I think Ukraine definitely would have had a chance. I mean, despite, but again, I mean. It kind of just came down to individual play because, you know, if you think about that situation, if that demo man and medic did not die getting pushed into the pit through air blast, I very well think that might have been able to be defended. I mean, obviously, it still would have been tough because you already, as you said, that sniper in the window, uh, you know, you have your engineer wrangling with minis from across the point. It, it would have been very hard to do, but um, I, either way, just incredibly impressive. Uh, I mean, clinical is the best way I could put it. I mean, that was a clinical push. Like, if you want to, you know, <laughs> take it like a strategy, strategy, you want to show a team how to push the AE side and how to do it effectively and where people to go, I would show them that right there because it was just a thing of beauty. And, and that's the thing I love about TF2 is when you see really good teamwork, you see people playing together, uh, there's nothing better. And 
I agree. That was probably the best way to end that match. Uh, just so effectively, so well. Um, tough fought by Ukraine. Great season, great run by them. But definitely the Swedes have earned their repeat, the championship uh, in their favor, uh, taking it 2-0 on steel and 2-1 on upward. Absolutely, and that's no mean feat, seeing as Ukraine uh, managed to make it here, knocking out France, knocking out USA and Denmark. Uh, big names that people thought could do well in the competition. But they've made it to the final, but have uh, been undone by the Swedes. Uh, Niyunen has joined us. Congratulations, uh, Niyunen, for winning your second Nations Cup back-to-back. -back. Uh, what's your initial thoughts? Like, How happy are you, and how tough of a match was it against Ukraine? Mm, I'm very happy. Like it's really it's fine to win, of course. Um, it was tougher than I. Well, it's hard to say, really. Uh, upward was tighter than I thought. Steel went our way. Like we kind of got to do what we wanted to do. So I'm happy about that. But uh, yeah, I'm happy overall. It was a fun cup, and we had a great team uh, this year as well. Were you worried at any point uh, during upward when they pulled around back? Did you, were you worried at any point that they might stage a bit of a comeback that, you know, if they could take upward off you, they'd be in a good advantage on steel and that you'd really have to dig in and, you know, you'd have to win the next round? Uh, no, nah, upward wasn't really that worrying. Like, uh, usually when you win the first round and then lose the second, you start to get, like, a bit anxious that it's gonna, the tables can turn. Uh, but it felt, like, kind of all right. It wasn't, like, any big mistakes we did. Uh, it was more, like, they had some big plays and they took advantage of them. So it wasn't really on our side, it was rather them having a good round than we having a bad one. Uh, we saw some great plays for you on both maps. I mean, the strategies on holding third on upward really seemed to work. That's where you got most of your time. And that kind of AE push on steel was pretty insane. 1 minute 44, one of the fastest times we've seen. Uh, probably the second fastest we've seen in the Nations Cup this year. Um, for you, in your mindset, who played uh, the best for your team? Um, and, and, you know, for Ukraine, who do you think was the toughest player to play against? Uh, Def is uh, surely the toughest player to play against. Uh, like, even though we, we knew that he's the one man that could, like, win them the final, uh, it's yeah, it's really hard to counter, like, a really good demo. Um, so he played very well. Nash obviously played very well, but that's, like, the two players we expected to do big work as well. Uh, on our side, it's kind of hard. Like, Vilek is uh, always rather amazing. Uh, he probably doesn't get enough credit for it. Um, other than that, I don't know. Sebastian really stepped it up uh, as well on Steel and probably saved her pee on the flank uh, lots of times. Uh, we are joined now by Viljack. Congratulations for uh, winning. Um, your same question to you. I mean, how did you rate your performance and how worried were you when they pulled uh, a round back on upward? I mean, how confident were you going into the game? Um, and you know, how were you feeling during the game that you would see it out and take the championship? Well, I didn't actually think they'd take a round from us on upward, to be honest. And uh, I was really worried about us either. Nobody was like upset and mumbled or anything, so. I knew we had this game. We were just going for it. And for you guys, it's like when you pushed uh, from Steel, either of you guys can answer this. When you went from that AE, what prompt did you guys practice that, or was that more of just kind of an improvisation, like you improv that, um, like in the moment, or, or kind of how did that decision making go down for that final round that that won you the that won you the game? Like, we, we haven't done any ATV pushes at all. All we've done in scrims is basically to counter A, because we know Ukrainians can do it, we knew Russians can do it, so we've, like, had map talks where we basically talk about denying it. We haven't done ATV a single time, but we've practiced against it. Um, so, basically, the first steel round, uh, Undke noticed that they were holding real aggressive on B, uh, so we would have time to sort of rotate fast enough to A without them having a proper rotation back to lobby to deny us. Um, so Kai basically called if we should go HV after like sort of half ass faking B. Uh, and it worked out uh, super great. Uh, we've now also got on Kaya and congratulations on Kaya for winning 
uh, the Nations Cup uh, again. Um, how pleased are you with uh, this win compared to last year? I mean, you weren't playing as many games this year and you've come in and, you know, according to Union, you've saved uh, the team with your, your antics moving on to Medic uh, in the semi-final and your main calling has really carried them on uh, through to the final. Um, how, how, how happy are you that you've uh, managed to get here after um, the tough games you've had over the semi-final? Uh, yeah, already on the semi-finals. So we, like, if we could do a comeback like that against Russia, we can we can win the entire thing. So I was really confident after this game, and it felt great winning it too. Was there any doubt in your mind uh, when they put them back a map? Back, sorry, not a map. A round back on upward uh, that they may be able to stage a comeback, kind of like what you did against Russia, um, and especially with you, in your mindset that Steel was you know a good map for the Ukrainians that they may be able to put you under some pressure and at least take you onto the third map. Uh, well, no, not really, because uh, I, I'm super used to getting pressured, so this is just another day in my life. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we got kind of complacent in the second round. Uh, we were too cocky, we played too aggressively, and we made too many mistakes. Uh, like, it, it was a good round for us, but like on the defense, it kind of crumbled, because like one mistake kind of snowballed into us losing the round. Um, a question that goes out to all the Swedes. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any uh, anybody from the Ukraine team to join us. I'm not sure if they're on their way or if they're unable to make it. Um, but to a question to all of you guys. Oh, we are actually joined by Nesh now. Um, so I'll, I'll delay that question for a bit longer. Commiserations, Nesh. Um, hello. Hello. Sorry for sorry for your loss. Um, you did top frag on upward. Um, how you know coming into the game? What were your thoughts? Uh, were you confident that you could get the win, or was it always going to be kind of an uphill battle for your team? No, actually, we knew that it would be kind of a very hard game, that they have, like, I don't know, a super advantage on upward, and still they're also, like, pretty good on it. I don't know why we picked it, to be honest. But, yeah, we kind of knew that we were going to lose, but we still kind of had our heads up, tried our best. Um, when you were around on upward, was there any moment where you thought, you know, that, that you'd spotted a weakness, that you could, you know, you could take it all the way? I mean, how was kind of the morale in the team as, as the match went on? Um, after the first round, I think we had a 30 minutes time or something, right? On the attacker's side. So Yeah, the first time was 13 and a half minutes. Yeah, we were actually already worried and we knew we were going to lose the first round, but the second one should be should be like like our round because we practiced our stride on every um, point and especially the third point went wrong on the first round I think so we kind of fixed that and got a better time but I don't know what happened in the third round but yeah we kind of lose it I don't know I've actually got the combined logs across the entire um, and Higher final now with Ali with 84 kills, uh, top damaging as well with 41,000. Nesh, you were just behind with 82 kills, and Viljack, you were in third place with 69 kills, 69 headshots. Um, so there you go. But a question now to uh, to the Swedes. I mean, you've won two years in a row. I'm not sure how ETF Duel are playing out Nations Cups now. Whether or not uh, we will have a Highlander one next season, or whether it will just be the Sixes one. Um, I'm not sure how organization is going to be. Um, but looking into the future, how keen are you guys to make it a hat trick and uh, totally imprint your dominance on the format and try to win the next one? I'm super in love with Nations Cup. Like it's throughout all the seasons I've played, it's probably Nations Cup is the real thing I enjoy the most. Um, and you can clearly see like Team Sweden ah, uh, didn't win the first one. Uh, then it win the second one, then I get up, then win two in a row. So I see a pattern there that I'm uh, kind of keen on uh, fulfilling. Sam, yeah, you Ian is a really good captain, actually. I have to thank him for doing this two years in a row, even though the motivation hasn't always been on top. So, yeah, cool. I really liked his captain. My boy. You should thank Wildjack for carrying, to be honest. True, true. I mean, uh, I just yeah. click heads, I don't really do anything else. That's it, Viljack, uh, uh, on Kai, are you going to be 
returning in the future for Sweden? Do you see yourselves playing over the next year or two to maybe uh, win, help Sweden win for a third time? Or are you going to say this is the last time representing your country? I'm definitely playing again. The next Nations Cup is in two years. I don't know if I'm even going to be alive then. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a joke. But No, who knows? It's two years. But yeah, I'd like to play again. Uh, Nesh, I mean, you guys surprised everyone, not only by beating the USA, by beating France, and then Denmark. Um, you know, the fact that you reached the final was probably the uh, Cinderella story of the entire tournament. Nobody expected you to get this far. Um, other than maybe New Union, maybe a quiet fan for you right at the start of the competition, uh, thinking you guys could pull off the miraculous. Um, how, like, obviously you've just lost a final, the, uh, the morale's going to be pretty low, but how hyped are you for the future? I mean, do you guys see yourselves as kind of establishing yourselves as maybe you know, a country to be beaten. I mean, people are going to be looking out for you now in the future. And do you think you can go the, a step further maybe in like the next competition? Um, well, the next competition is like in two years. Who knows who will stay in TF2? Like, I don't know. Like, we didn't expect to be in the finals as well. We just hoped for a group, uh, for a good uh, group stage. And that's it, actually. And then we were like, oh, okay, we got out, out of the group stage, so... Let's see what we can do. Like maybe we can just get into the finals, and that just happened. I don't know. But yeah, for the new next competitions, I don't know. Maybe in the sixes will happen something. I don't know. We could have a rematch with some of these players here, some versus Ukraine in the sixes Nations Cup. Then maybe uh, in 2016. Uh, Sigafu, do you have anything you wanted to ask these guys? Uh no. I think you covered it all. Alright, so I'm just going to do some quick shout-outs, guys, uh, going down the list. Nesh, do you have anyone you want to shout-out to before we yeah, disappear? Of course, Team Ukraine, that we made it so far. No one expected it. Love you, boys. Uh, Niyunin, do you have anyone you want to shout-out to? Mm, we too, and all hit us for Tiv2. Uh, like Saloon, Sherry, Gay, who had a forum post that he wasn't going to do anything more. Tiff2 related has done a lot as well. Uh, and of course, it fell and all admins for taking their time and organizing and making sure Nations Cups keep on happening. Uh, Team Sweden for showing up and TLR for letting me have her pee. <laughs> Onkaya, do you have anyone you want to shout out to? Yeah, shout out to Smire for uh, support. And Viljack? Shout out to Twisted and Ali for his sick minds. All about the binds and Sigafu, do you have anyone you want to give a cheeky shout out to? No one in particular, but I do want to shout out to uh, UCJ and in particular John for helping put all of this together uh, and just really appreciate him, especially even coming back to me after I accidentally didn't realize I had my wrong time due to time zones in one game, but still uh, keep bringing me back and it's been a blast to cats this and and he's been doing excellent on on camera so don't uh forget and chat guys to give him some love and cj of course for always being a wonderful casting partner love you <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna get a room later on um but yeah lots of shout outs here from me a uh, shout outs of course to tf2 pickup.net um anyone who wants to play some highland i do believe uh, every Highlander pickup that is played at the moment on TFT Pickup will give money towards Tip of the Hats. So a shout out to them. That is a charity stream still running, I believe. Um, so definitely go and check out that stream after this has finished. Um, and please donate towards the uh, One Step Camp uh, charity. Shout outs to my team, as always. Strong opinions. Love you guys. Shout out to my LAN team, Deutschland. Checkers had a great time there. Ate a lot of onions for some reason, but it was great meeting so many of the other Highlander players. And of course, shout out to John for the production he's done across the entirety of this competition. And to all of my fellow casters, Sigafu, especially as he is here with me right now. People like Niyunin and Asaj and all the other people who have casted Highlander, thank you for giving up your time and spending the time to cast Highlander with the rest of us. Um, thank you to Niyunin, Nesh, Onkaya and Viljack for joining us for interviews. Um, this has been the grand final of the Highlander Nations Cup. Congratulations again to Sweden, winning two maps to zero over Ukraine. This has been Blackout Gaming TV. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.